For the next 1,000 days, I'll be turning into a ton of different dinosaurs with amazing abilities. I'll grow into new massive sizes and gain powerful attacks to overcome mutant beasts, hunters, ancient threats, and even gods in Minecraft. On day one, I spawned into a haunting biome as a baby shadow raptor. My entire civilization of shadow raptors were running for their lives as meteors rained from the sky above. What's going on? I frantically searched for my parents to find them seeking cover in our colony. Bronzo, you need to hide before the Radiant Rex finds you. Before I could respond, a massive meteor crashed into them, killing them instantly. No! I looked up, and to my horror, I spotted an angelic T-Rex descending from the sky. This is the end for all shadow creatures. I, the Radiant Rex, will eliminate every last one of you. The Rex's Radiant Raptors rushed in to deal with any stragglers. I quickly took off running as fast as my legs could carry me. On day two, I was on the run from a pack of Radiant Raptors. As a Shadow Raptor, I was quick on my feet, but so were my pursuers. I ran as fast as I could, but it wasn't long before the sun rose into the sky. The sunlight set my shadowy scales on fire. I took cover in a nearby cave, surviving with only half a heart of health left. The sunlight hurts shadow dinosaurs, noted. Before I could catch my breath, the radiant raptors caught up to me. Looks like lunch came early. No, leave me alone. Suddenly, my shadow raptor powers awoke inside of me. I shot shadow blades that temporarily stunned the raptors. I took my chance and ran deep into the caves. I knew my attack wouldn't hold them off for long. On day three, I stumbled into a massive cavern filled to the brim with boiling hot lava. One dip in that stuff and I'm done for. I could hear the sound of the radiant raptors close behind, so I took my chances. I began to jump from rock to rock over the flaming hot chasm. The raptors finally caught up to me, but before they could jump, the entire room shook violently. To my surprise, the raptors turned around and ran away. This place is gonna blow. Run for your lives. Wait, am I inside of the volcano? To my horror, I realized I was in the middle of an active volcano and it was about to erupt. I quickly rushed to the other side of the chasm and looked for a way out. I managed to exit the mountain, but it was still daylight. I had to find cover if I wanted any chance of survival. I ducked under a tree as the volcano erupted into a fiery inferno. I don't think this tree is gonna hold for long. Just as I had thought, the lava set all of the nearby trees ablaze. I was forced to keep moving before the flames caught up to me. On days four through six, I ran through the forest fire in search of cover. The leaves from all the trees around me were burning away, reducing my shade from the sun the longer I stayed. All the while, lava still crept in slowly behind me. Help! I ran until I was cornered under a lone tree. There wasn't anywhere else to go. I was either going to be melted by the lava or burnt in the sunlight. I have to think of something. In a moment of desperation, I dug out the ground beneath my feet. To my surprise, I plummeted into a cavern beneath me. Water broke my fall, saving me from instant death. When I finally regained my footing, I realized I was in some sort of den. I don't like the sound of that. I turned around and spotted a massive T-Rex looming over my shoulder. On days seven through nine, the T-Rex lunged at me with its massive jaws. No, 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 no! The dino's attacks were absolutely relentless. One after another, they kept coming. I could barely keep up. In response, I used my shadow blades to slice and dice into his thick hide, but it was like I didn't even hit him. The T-Rex reared back and fired off a breath weapon made of pure spirit energy. I was only narrowly able to dodge in time. My raptor claws seemed to keep the beast at bay, but his health was barely dwindling. The T Rex was too powerful. If I couldn't change the tide of battle, I was going to be killed. I have to think outside the box. Come on, Bronzo, think, think. Just then, I remembered that above the cavern was an ocean of lava from the volcano. I used my surroundings to my advantage and blasted holes in the ceiling with my shadow blade attacks. The lava slowly crept in from the ceiling above as we continued to fight dino versus dino. I clang onto life as the lava inched closer and closer until finally it poured onto the 
horrific T-Rex, setting him ablaze. On days 10 and 11, I entered into another room where the T-Rex was hoarding mountains of treasure. I dug around the area and managed to find some armor for later. This will help protect me from the radiant raptors. I looked around more and spotted the remains of different dinosaurs that the T-Rex had munched on. I accidentally touched one of the piles of bones and it sprung to life. Whoa! As a shadow raptor, I can reanimate the dead. What's your name? Run! I turned around and realized the radiant raptors had finally found me. I tried to run, but more of them emerged until we were surrounded. I was already weakened from my previous battle, so their forces were too strong. I blacked out. On days 12 through 15, I woke up inside of a cage in the middle of a field surrounded by radiant raptors. Where am I? Just then, I realized the sun was creeping over the horizon. The radiant raptors planned to cook me alive in the sunlight. I tried to find a way to escape, but I couldn't get out. I thought I was done for, but the baby skeleton Rex jumped in to help. Kill the intruder. You can't kill me if I'm already dead. Dark magic rules. The raptors dogpiled onto the baby Rex, but to my surprise, he took the attacks like a pro. The skeleton Rex broke me out of my cage, and the two of us took off running as the raptors followed us in close pursuit. Thanks for the help. Who are you? The name's Jack. The two of us ran until we were met with a crossroads. You go down one path and I'll go down the other. You know it's the right place when you get there. Hurry! On days 16 through 18, I ran down the path until I was led into an old graveyard. There, I spotted a mysterious fossil emitting dark energy. That looks important. I took a step closer, but suddenly the ground began to shake. To my horror, the massive T-Rex from a few days ago had returned. The lava didn't kill him? The beast lunged at me with its powerful jaws, and I dove in after the fossil. When I got my claws on it, my body began to transform. I grew larger and gained powerful spikes on my back. I was now an adult shadow raptor with 10 hearts. I used my strength to fight it out with my towering opponent. I slashed at blinding speed, hitting my marks against the T-Rex. With my newfound power came greater speed and agility. I used that agility to dash in and out of the combat. My powers as an adult shadow raptor allowed me to slice at the Rex and cut through the air to dodge. He could barely land a single hit. I felt faster than light and was able to catch my opponent completely off guard. By quickly moving behind him, I roared and shot red shadow beams that drained my opponent's health, weakening him greatly. The T-Rex continued to be a formidable opponent as his skin was as tough as steel, but with my newfound strength, I was able to pierce right through it. My larger size gave me a higher advantage against the dino, leaving him struggling to deal with my attacks. Thanks to the strength of the fossil, I was strong enough to take out the horrific dino once and for all. I didn't have a moment to rest as I heard a familiar voice calling out to me. I looked off in the distance and spotted Jack running towards me. The radiant raptors were still pursuing him. We better keep moving. On days 19 through 21, Jack and I were being chased by the radiant raptors. We needed to lose them fast. Follow me. My skeletal friend led me to an area covered in shadow, and the two of us hid within the darkness. Once the raptors arrived, they tried to lurk around the corners, but our shadowy bodies kept us concealed. We know you're around here somewhere. Our boss is sure to sniff you out. The raptors left, but I knew that the Radiant Rex was sure to come looking for us. Let's build a base before he arrives. I got to work on making shelter from the forces of the Radiant Dinosaur. I built it as a massive raptor skull with soul fire accents. The back of the skull led into the actual base, and inside I was able to make bigger rooms. The ones I added for now were mine and Jack's. Jack got a fossil themed room with a huge bed that he could relax in. In mine, I made sure to have all the different crafting benches and tables I would need. Hey Jack, what happened with that fossil back there? That was one of the six shadow fossils. They're the only artifact strong enough to defeat the Radiant Rex. So I have to get the last five, and then I can take him out? Sign me up! Won't be easy. The fossils are located in the most dangerous parts of the world. And with the Radiant Rex's generals roaming around, they'll be even harder to get to. That's if the Radiant Rex doesn't get to us first. If collecting these fossils are the key to defeating the Radiant Rex himself and avenging my parents, then that's a risk I'm willing to take. With my new mission in mind, I built a room with six item frames to house all of my future fossils. With that, my expansion was done. Suddenly, the roof was blown open to reveal the Radiant Rex flying overhead. He found us, hide! Jack and I then ran outside. 
On days 22 through 24, the Radiant Rex landed outside of our base and sniffed around in search of us. We found a great hiding spot behind a ledge. I can smell your shadowy magic. Come out of your hiding place. Jack and I held our breath as the Rex stuck his nose closer and closer to us. I could feel my heart rate rising. I thought he surely had found us, and it took all of my willpower to stand still. Unfortunately, Jack gave in to the panic and ran out in a frenzy. There you are. The Radiant Rex shot a beam of powerful light magic at Jack, wounding him badly. Jack! Disgusting. That must have been the dark magic I smelled. The Radiant Rex took to the skies, and I rushed to Jack's side. On days 25 through 26, I was beside my friend, who was barely clinging to life. What happened? Aren't you immortal? Not to the powerful light of the Radiant Rex. The only way to save me now is to get the second fossil from the haunted woods. Then there's not a second to waste! I set off towards the haunted woods to find the next fossil and to save my friend. After some travel, I arrived at the mysterious landscape. The sky was red and I felt a feeling of dread inside of me. Even so, I stumbled through the forest of dead trees, looking for anything that could lead me to the fossil. Jack was already in critical condition, so I didn't have much time. I managed to find a heavily weeded area and sensed dark magic nearby. I must be getting close. Suddenly, the plant sprung to life and started to attack me all around. Around. The vine slammed down around me, trying to smash me into the ground. There was no way I was going to let this thing get in my way. I struck back with my weapon, slicing to and fro at the thick vines. I sent out my shadow blades to dig into them as well, but it only served to make the plants matter. In the next instant, the plant bulb began to spit up little insects and seed bombs. The bombs exploded around me, and the insects began to swarm me relentlessly. In an effort to fend them off, I even used a stronger power that let me attack with several slices at once. I fought with everything I had, but no matter what I did, more and more continued to sprout around me. Things were not looking good. I can't keep up! On days 27 through 29, I was forced to make a run for it. I fled until finally spotting an abandoned mansion. I jumped inside and took cover from the onslaught of evil plant life. This place is insane! Just then, I heard ghostly noises coming from behind me. When I turned around, there was a horde of ghosts waiting. Intruder, protect the fossil at all costs. The ghosts swarmed me, and I braced myself for battle. Immediately, they began to swipe at me with their icy cold hands, slashing and trying to hold me for the other ones to pile on me. They also had ear-piercing screams that released a ghostly blue aura that shook me to my core. Even though I was hitting them hard with my own attacks, they were really stubborn and continued to come right back for me. I unleashed everything I had, dashing out of the way of their attacks and slicing and dicing. The whole fight, I kept thanking my lucky stars for my shadow creature power. It was only thanks to them that I was able to land any hits on these guys to begin with. Both sides fought with all of their might. It seemed like neither of us were going to give in. I'll never surrender. The Radiant Rex will never get our fossil. Did you say Radiant Rex? I quickly explained myself to the ghost. We were on the same side. Once they heard my story, we came to a truce. If it means the end of the Radiant Rex, then we'll allow passage to the fossil. Maybe then we can be left alone to rest in peace. In peace. Suddenly, the Radiant Raptors showed up to stop me. We'll hold them off. Run now. On days 30 through 33, I moved deeper into the haunted mansion as the ghosts held off the raptors for me. I need to find that fossil! Jack is running out of time! I navigated through the halls of the mansion, but it seemed like there was no end in sight. It was as if the building itself was playing tricks on me. I needed to break the cycle. Every second I wasted was a second more that Jack was in danger. I ran to a nearby exit and ended up pretty far away from the mansion. Everything was quiet until a creature ran up in the darkness. What's that? I ran after it using my quick raptor feet. However, just as I thought I was going to catch up, the ground crumbled beneath me. I fell into the darkness below. On days 34 through 36, I woke up in a mysterious large arena within a deep dark biome. There, I saw the fossil sitting on a pedestal nearby. Did that creature lead me here on purpose? I better go get that fossil quick. I started to approach the pedestal when suddenly I heard the sound of heavy footsteps walking in my direction. I saw up ahead and realized that a mutant warden was lurking inside of the deep dark. No sudden movements! I snuck around anxiously, trying to stay as quiet as possible. 
people. The mutant warden tried to pick up on my vibrations, but I took extra care to move in small increments at a time. I slowly got closer and closer to the fossil, but I suddenly stepped on a stick. A loud crack echoed through the chambers, and I had foolishly given away my location. The warden lunged at me, and I braced myself. On days 37 through 40, I was facing off with the mutant warden. He had me in size and strength, but I had to get to the fossil if I wanted to save Jack. Right off the bat, this monster tried to smash me into paste. His fists were enormous and caused debris to fly off the ground every time he struck it. Although I was quick to dart around with my powers, he managed to land solid blows that almost knocked the wind out of me. I did my best to whittle away at his health. Although every slice brought him lower, it wasn't nearly enough to slow him down, which was a huge problem because not only was he insanely strong, but super fast too. He would charge at me, roaring crazily, and all I could do was dart as quickly as I could out of the way. At one point, he managed to grab me and lifted me into the air, only to throw me around like nothing. I fought tooth and nail with everything I had, but I didn't stand a chance against the beast. I tried to make a run for the fossil, but all of my attempts were met with bitter failure. The mutant warden knocked me away, hit after hit, and my health was getting low. I tried to beat him with speed, but he could sense every step I took. He predicted my attacks and smashed into me for unbelievable amounts of damage. I was left with almost no health, and things seemed grim. Is this the end? On days 41 to 43, I was still fighting the mutant warden. I was just thinking I was done for when a little shadow saber-toothed tiger leapt in front of me. Hey, big guy, leave him alone. To my amazement, the little saber-tooth shot out an enormous fireball at the mutant warden. The beast immediately turned his attention to the saber-tooth and away from me. Get the fossil, now. You don't need to tell me twice. I rushed in and grabbed the fossil off the pedestal. The moment I touched it, its powers melded with mine. As I transformed into my final form, I felt stronger than I ever had before. 10 more hearts were available to me now, as well as a fantastic shadow ball ability that let me harness the powers of shadow more than ever before. I'm back and ready to go. Feeling empowered, I jumped back into the fray. You're just in time. I sure was. The mutant warden had done a number on my new friend. With my new abilities, I was able to kill him before he could do any more harm. Once that was over, I turned to the saber tooth. Who are you? I'm Shane. I'm always here to help my shadow brothers out. Good to meet you, Shane. But I have a friend who's in trouble. Come with me and you can stay at my base. But we have to hurry. On days 44 to 46, I returned to my base and touched the fossil onto Jack, instantly revitalizing him. I'm back. You saved my life. My second life, actually. I'm glad to see it. Oh, by the way, this is my new friend, Shane. Hi there. I'm the one who led Bronzo here to the deep dark where the fossil was located. I guess we make a team. What do you say, Shane? I say, I'm in. Together, we decided to expand the base. First thing first was to repair the giant hole in the roof, created by the Radiant Rex. After the roof was all patched up, I began making a room for my newest member, Shane. To finish it all up, I replaced the item frames with pedestals and placed the second fossil. I only needed four more to defeat the Radiant Rex. Wow, this place feels super cozy. Thanks for making me a room. No problem, Shane. You're part of the team now. Just then, the entire base began shaking. I knew it had to be Radiant Rex again. So this time, I went out to check it out myself. You stay here and keep guard. On days 47 to 50, I headed out to the base to check things out. After some creeping around, I found him nearby, performing some sort of ritual. Night, night, what a fright. The time has come to bring the light. In an instant, the wonderful cool of the night turned to searing daylight. Ah, hot! The sun began to burn me. Quickly as I could, I darted away to take cover in the shade of a nearby tree. Unlucky for me, the Radiant Rex heard me and started to sniff around again. I can smell your dark magic. Show yourself, Shadow Raptor. Laughing, he took to the sky and started to blast away at the trees to try to blow my cover. If he managed to uncover me, there was no way I stood a chance, especially in daylight. I looked around desperately and spotted a cave. It was now or never. Taking my chances, I ran for the cave and made it inside. 
On days 51 to 52, I merged on the other side in a forested area full of long necks. Wow, this place is interesting. To my surprise, the long necks were under attack by radiant forces. I lunged into battle, killing the radiants one by one. I used my shadow ball and my shadow blades. Eventually, I defeated all of the radiant forces and saved the long necks. A shadow raptor in broad daylight? What are you doing wandering around? I don't have much time to explain. Radiant Rex has casted a spell to turn darkness into light. There ceased to be nighttime any longer. He's after me right this instant. Sounds like you're in dire need of assistance. I know a witch doctor who may be able to help you in these circumstances. Follow me. The long neck guided me to the local witch, and there she evaluated me. Hmm, I do like to work with shadow energy. Very well, I will teach you how to do a rain dance so that the clouds can protect you from the sun at your will. First, you have to hold this rainmaker, then start the dance. The witch began showing me how it was done, and just like that, the rain began pouring down in an instant. Now you try it. I did just as the witch did, and it was working. Clouds covered the sky, and it began to downpour. Wow, it's actually raining. Unfortunately, it worked too well. The village began flooding, and I couldn't undo it. Eventually, the rain came down so hard that I got washed away. Help me! On days 53 to 55, I woke up in the ocean, super low on breath. If I didn't get out, I was gonna drown. My lungs burned and I was certain I was going to die when an aquatic dinosaur came to the rescue. Once she approached me, she gave me the power of water breathing and dolphin's grace. As I was suddenly able to breathe, I felt the burning in my lungs go away. Thank you so much, Miss, uh... My name is Aqua, but we better keep moving. Why's that? Out of the blue, a horde of Radiant Rex's aquatic forces arrived. That's why. There's the thief. Get her! They started to charge at us! Run, Aqua! On days 56 to 58, I was fighting the aquatic forces while Aqua was taking cover somewhere. Fighting underwater was a whole new experience for me. It was really hard to move well since I was still getting used to swimming. But with the help of the dolphin's grace, I managed to pull it off really well. While the aquatic forces stabbed and slashed at me with their spears, I darted around them with my own trusty blade and hit them whenever their guard was lowered. There were still members of the aquatic forces though. They used their home territory to their advantage harnessing the power of water to fuel their attacks. In the end though, they were no match for the Shadow Raptor. With a few more well-placed Shadow Balls, I managed to knock them out. I then swam over to Aqua where she was hiding. There you are. What was that about? I may have stolen their super secret map that leads to a priceless treasure, maybe. I thought that this map might lead us to another fossil. Awesome, you're the best Aqua. Take me to the treasure. Yeah, I'm glad you're on board. Let's go get it! Together, we followed the map, and it led us to an underwater palace. However, there was one problem. This place was protected by the light! Don't worry, I've got this. Aqua zipped through the light beams, taking away the light protection on the palace. Only problem was, it alerted the guards! I'll deal with them. Go inside and get the treasure! I did not hesitate to stick around and find out what would happen, so I swam into the palace. On days 59 to 61, I arrived inside of the palace. There was one catch. The priceless treasure was in fact the third fossil. Hey, I was looking for that. Stop right there. I whipped around to see a blue and yellow serpent lady. It was the head of the Radiant Rex's aquatic army. How nice. It appears you've delivered yourself right to me. Once I take your head, I'll be promoted to the head of the guard. Not if I have anything to say about it. She lunged at me, trying to spear me straight in the heart at the get-go. I leapt out of the way and darted back at her with my blade, launching shadow attacks at her as she summoned nets of kelp to try and restrain me. She even began to sing, which would cause my vision to be shrouded in darkness. I wasn't deterred at all by this. In fact, it just motivated me to fight harder. The moment she was distracted, I grabbed the fossil right off its pedestal. Immediately, our powers began to merge. I gained five more hearts, as well as a teleportation power. Boy, you insufferable vermin. You're going down. I felt rejuvenated from the power of the fossil. Her previous attacks still stung, but now I was stronger than ever. As she slung spell after spell after spell at me, I darted around her with my teleportation and shadow blade power. She was hardly able to hit me. 
Soon, I hit her with one last powerful shadow ball. Thanks to my determination and awesome new power, I was finally able to defeat Mariana, the leader of the aquatic army. But my celebration didn't last long. Out of nowhere, the Radiant Rex appeared overhead. Celebrating too soon as usual. Looks like you took the bait. Below me, the floor turned into magma blocks. No! The magma blocks pull was stronger than I could push against. There was no way for me to escape, and they were burning me whittling my health down bit by bit. With Radiant Rex watching from above, I soon lost too much health and blacked out. On days 62 to 64, I woke up trapped inside of Radiant Rex's base, up in the clouds. He flew before me, towering over me like a thunderous cloud. You've stirred up enough trouble for my liking. Time to eliminate you once and for all. The Radiant Rex charged up a powerful attack, but to my surprise, Shane interrupted it. You leave Bronzo alone, you floating block of gold! Shane attacked Rex, but it was clearly no match for his crushing strength. Radiant Rex landed a critical blow onto Shane. Shane, no! With such a powerful attack, Shane died immediately. No! I was so enraged that I broke out of my containment cell. I knew it wasn't wise to stay and fight Radiant Rex, so I ran for my life, hoping not to get caught. General, after him. I have other things I must attend to. On day 65 to 68, the head general of the Radiant Rex floated up to the sky base. And so the chase began. He was a crazy, angelic dragon who was swifter in the air than anyone else I had ever seen. If I was going to get away, I had to distract him. But I was so angry about what he had done. You'll pay for what you did to Shane. Take this. In a rage, I fired shadow attack after shadow attack at him. He was so sturdy, though. None of my attacks bothered him. <laughs> Is that all you've got, Shadow Raptor? Unfortunately, it was. The head guard took the opportunity to attack me again. His attacks rained down godlike lightning bolts, causing the very air to flash and rumble. In the face of such force, I had to keep moving. I ran until I realized there was nowhere else to go. It was all a loop. No, I'm stuck. There was nowhere for me to go. And more importantly, I had a decision to make. It was either face the general or take a leap of faith and jump off the side. Ugh. Here goes nothing! I ran the last few blocks toward the edge of the cloud and jumped, plummeting toward the ground below. Looks like that foolish raptor chose death. <laughs> I'd better tell the boss of our victory. On day 69 to 71, I was about to die from fall damage, but Jack ran in and used a bucket of water to save me. Water bucket clutch. Jack, my hero! Anything for my best friend. Hey. Where's Shane? He didn't make it. Oh no, say it's not so. I know, it's awful, but Jack, we're not safe here. The general might find us. Follow me, I know a place we can hide. Without hesitation, I followed Jack. Eventually, we ended up in an abandoned village in ruins. What is this place? This was my home, before it was ravaged by the Radiant Rex. He's the reason I'm a skeleton now. He truly is a monster. We have to make him pay for this. Intruders! I turned around, only to find a large triceratops charging at us at full speed. On days 72 to 74, Jack and I ran away to avoid the triceratops horns. They chased all the way into a crater, cornering us. Wait, please, we're friendly. We're enemies of the Radiant Rex. You're also against the Radiant Rex? Fine, you need to come with me. The Triceratops led us to a mysterious looking altar. It was similar to the ones that would have artifacts on them. The only difference was that the one meant to be here was missing. This village was once protected by a fossil that allowed shadow creatures to roam in the sunlight, but the Radiant Rex stole it, leaving us defenseless to his might. There's gotta be a clue here, somewhere. I spotted a weird chunk of stone jetting out from the wall. It was a button. I wonder what this does. I hid it, and to everyone's surprise, a stairway opened up in front of me. Bingo! In the next split second, the Triceratops that had kindly helped us was shot dead by a light attack. No! Who did that? I looked up to see the head guard from before had found us. He looked like he was going to attack again at any moment. Bronzo, we need to split up. You head into the passageway. Don't worry about me. Got it! I went running down the steps that had mysteriously just appeared.
On day 75 to 76, I entered a temple room where the fourth fossil was sitting on a pedestal. There it is. I'm so close to obtaining it. Unfortunately, it was surrounded by light protectants. I can't believe it was under our nose the whole time. I broke through the light beacons and suddenly the room shook. Whoa, 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 what's going on? Out came Zidri once again to stop me. What did you do to Jack? Defeat me, and you might find out. The general transformed. With the power of the light, he was able to shield himself in a full set of armor. The general was brutal with his new armor. As he stomped around, he shook the very arena, causing debris to spray from the earth. Even with the armor, he was still fast. The general leapt up and slammed back down over and over with his full weight, knocking me around like a doll. Sometimes I managed to dodge out of the way thanks to my shadow powers, but it was often a close call. I threw shadow ball after shadow shadow ball at him, hoping to do some damage, but the armor was too tough. The general roared and continued to strike at me. I was losing the battle, but I knew I couldn't give up. There was too much on the line. I mustered up the strength and grabbed the fossil mid-battle. Suddenly, I gained the ability to grain a powerful line of falling rocks and immunity to sunlight. Ha ha! Now nothing can stop me. Not even the rays of sun. I used my newfound powers to create boulders and hit them when they least expected it. The rocks were so sharp and heavy that they pierced right through the general's armor. Eventually, I was able to defeat the beast. Yes, I did it! Wait! I have to make sure Jack is okay. On days 77 to 78, I ran outside to find that Jack was caged up. With the dawn approaching, there were only seconds before the sun would burn him alive. Jack, I'm here for you. I rushed to his side, and after quickly breaking through the cage, I used the power of the fourth fossil to protect him. You saved me, thank you. I don't think the Radiant Rex is going to be happy I killed his general. We better regroup at home. Jack and I returned to our base. When we reached the inside of the base, I told Jack everything that had happened. After we had chatted, I added the third and fourth fossil to my display room. Why don't you take a short break? While you do, I think this base is in need of some upgrades. Let me take care of that. I guess I could use a nap. Okay, I trust you. As I napped, Jack got to work. He started out by digging out more of the cave. The room he was working on was an underground farm. It would help feed us if we ran out of food and would just be a nice place to relax. He added little sections of farmland full of carrots, potatoes, and wheat and made sure they all had enough water. Jack also added some decor. He planted some wonderful flowers and decorated the floor with mossy cobblestone and stone bricks. To light it all up, he hung copper lanterns from the walls. Not only did he do all that, but he also added a beautiful waterfall area for Aqua to be able to stay in with a long water path so she can come and go as she pleased. This looks great, Jack. Thanks, I did my best. Now that Aqua had a place to stay, a little bit later, she showed up at the base. Bronzo, I came with important news. I figured out where Radiant Rex has a secret base. Sounds like infiltration time to me. On days 79 and 80, I followed her to the Radiant Rex's outpost. I climbed out on land and peered inside. I watched as the Radiant Rex talked to one of his raptors. Sire, the giant shadow raptor defeated our general. He's just been getting stronger and stronger. I'm afraid that pretty soon he might even be able to defeat you. Excuse me, what did you just say? I said that at this rate, pretty soon, I think he might be strong enough to defeat you! Oh, I heard you. I just thought you wouldn't be stupid enough to utter those words twice. You and I both know that there is no possible way that puny rat could ever compare to me. He is nothing. He is worthless. But sir, the last general he defeated was one of our strongest men! <laughs> that doesn't matter. That oversized bird brain wasn't strong anyway. The new general will now take his place. New general? You don't mean... Turn forward! The general in question stepped forward. He was a massive red dragon. Are you sure they're powerful enough? Of course they are. Are you doubting the strength of a red dragon? They are far stronger than any one of your useless dinos. Useless dinos? That's a bit rude, sir. They aren't useless, they are just not too useful. Exactly. Now we've our new red dragon general. 
and those pesky dinos out of the way. Defeating that insolent Shadow Raptor should be a walk in the park. But sir, the Shadow Raptor is incredibly powerful. I think we've been underestimating his strength. Then let's put those worries to rest. General, why don't you give them a demonstration? The new general struck out and killed the raptor in one blow. Inconsequential. He's killing his own forces. This guy is ruthless. <laughs> How splendid. That's what he gets for doubting me. Suddenly, the new general's head snapped in my direction. I sense dark magic. Oh no, I gotta get out of here! On days 81 to 82, I was being hunted by the new general. I had to be stealthy and make sure not to make any loud sounds. I wanted to stop and hide, but his nose was like a bloodhound. He was on my tail. Shoot, shoot! Maybe I can sneak around the base to find some more time. Eventually, I found an opening and I rushed back to the water to return with Aqua. Glad you made it out. If only I could block out my dark magic scent somehow. I think I know a way. Come with me, quick. I followed Aqua through the ocean until I reached the frozen biome. Inside of this area is where you'll find the next fossil. It should cloak your scent. That's perfect! Let's go! Mm -mm. Unfortunately, I can't go any further. You're on your own. On my own? But how am I supposed to find the fossil? Don't worry, I've gotten that taken care of. Here, look at this. She handed me a map that led directly to where I needed to go. If you follow this, it should lead you directly towards the fossil. It's a little ways away, but I believe in you, Bronzo. You can do anything you set your mind to. Thanks, Aqua. I needed to hear that. Be careful, though, Bronzo. Long ago, this icy tundra was filled with tribes of dangerous people, and they were masters of living among the ice. It's been a while since I've traveled through these lands, though, so I'm not sure if they're still around, but don't mess with them if you see them. All right, thanks for the advice. I'll keep my eyes peeled and steer clear of them. Make haste. As long as he can sense your dark magic, the general will keep following you. You don't have to tell me twice. On days 83 to 84, I followed the map through the icy tundra. As I traveled, I spotted a caveman concealed in the ice. Oh no, I think he needs my help. I knew I was being chased but there was no way I could just leave someone in need. Hey, can you hear me in there? The man appeared to be frozen solid, unable to respond. Hello? Ugh, I guess he's just giving me the cold shoulder. The only way to melt the ice is to use heat. Thinking quickly, I set up campfire all around the iceberg, and in a few moments, the ice melted, freeing the caveman from his frosty prison. Hi, are you okay? Where am I? How long has it been? Don't worry, you're safe now. I freed you from the ice. I don't know when you were frozen. I've only been here for 83 days, so at least- I know, dangerous! <laughs> Apparently, he'd seen too many mean dinosaurs before because he started freaking out and hitting me with his club. Ow, hey, that hurts. I didn't want to hurt him, so I begged him to stop. No, I'm friendly, I'm friendly. As I tried to avoid the caveman swatting, I spotted the general approaching in the distance. Uh-oh, uh, caveman, look, evil dino. Huh? Dino? The caveman turned and saw the general. Thankfully, he considered the general to look enough like a dinosaur because he ran at him instead. No time to waste, gotta keep moving. On days 85 to 86, I continued to follow the map until I came to an icy lake. I had a really bad feeling, so I looked into the water. Inside were a bunch of frost crabs swimming around. They had one massive claw and one small. They also came in various different colors, such as purple, blue, and red. Oh, that's not so bad. As I watched, a cute little dolphin swam by. It was immediately killed by one of the crabs. Man, they're more vicious than I thought. I don't want to fall in there. I better be careful. It would be embarrassing to be the only known shadow raptor to turn into crab food. Meanwhile, my parents died with valor. With that dolphin in mind, I began to jump from iceberg to iceberg, trying to make my way across the lake without touching the water. The crabs looked at me with eagerness, waiting for me to drop in so they could feast upon me. I made sure to be extra aware of every jump. Okay, next one. I jumped 
jumped again and slipped, almost falling into the lake. Luckily, I stopped myself in the nick of time. Woo, that was a close one. Why must I be doing this now of all times? Shadow Raptors don't belong on ice. I turned around and realized the general was still pursuing me. Watch your step, little raptor. I wouldn't want to have to rescue you from the flesh-eating crabs. I'd like to kill you personally. Why don't you stop yapping and come do something about it then? The general flew up into the skies and bypassed all the icy obstacles and was gaining on me with immense speed. I began to regret egging him on. No time to think! I picked up the pace, and in doing so, I began to slip and slide crazily. This was so risky. Fortunately, I made it across without being fish food and kept moving. On days 87 to 88, I finally arrived at the location on the map. It was a massive ice temple. It towered hundreds of feet into the sky and was intimidating to say the least. Wow, this place is impressive. Whoever built this must have been an architectural genius. There were icebergs scattered around everywhere but more importantly I saw the fossil there waiting for me on a pedestal there it is I better snag that fossil before just then the temple began to shake with immense force what the what's going on why is everything rumbling I approached the fossil even more but something wasn't right is this an earthquake all of a sudden an ice golem fell from the top of the temple turn back greedy dino that fossil is mine but I I need it. You don't understand. I have to stop the Radiant Rex. I don't give an icicle's tip about you or your Radiant Rex. I've been the protector of this fossil for centuries. Then I'm sorry to have to be the one to end that. I don't think so. Ah! The Ice Golem then lashed out on me. On days 89 to 90, I fought the Ice Golem that was defending the fossil. They began by clobbering me with giant snowballs. They were packed so tightly, they felt like stone. I dodged with my shadowy abilities and sliced through him when I had the chance. The frozen behemoth unleashed some sub-zero steam into the atmosphere, making me freeze. I thought I wasn't gonna make it, but knew I couldn't give up after all of this. I summoned more and more rocks above the golem's head and weakened him. Then I charged up one last shadow ball to defeat him. No! I was the protector of this fossil! He sure was a tough one, but I always came out on top. The ice golem was no more. Time to get the fossil. You're too late for that. I whipped around to see that the general had caught up to my scent. That doesn't belong to you, boy. Who you calling boy? Oh, sorry. Would you rather be called chicken? No, I'd rather be called the guy who destroys the Radiant Rex and all his little henchmen. With no time to waste, I lunged for the fossil. I managed to grab it and fused with its power. I gained five more hearts, as well as an ice crystal. You insufferable creature. The general attacked. I thought that with this next fossil's power, I would be equally matched with him. But the general was impossibly powerful. Not only did he spit fire, but he was able to cloak himself in it too, making it really difficult to hit him. He used his agility to his advantage too, soaring into the air and striking me from above with a storm of flame. I did my best to retaliate with my new icy powers and my Shadow Raptor abilities, but I just couldn't match the heat. There was no other way to do it. I had to retreat. Fast as I could, I turned tail and ran. Run all you want, Raptor. I'll find you and bring you back to the Radiant Rex. On days 91 to 92, I returned back to the base. I'm so happy to see you're okay. I'm glad to see you too, buddy. I need to get my mind off all this chaos. Why don't we expand the base a little bit? Heck yeah! I decided to make a room to forge my armor for battle. I had to make it super big to fit everything that needed to be inside. Armories need a lot of heat to melt the metal, so I made lava falls that I'd be able to use. I made a stream that led directly to the forging spot I'd picked out, where I placed anvils, blast furnaces, and even a pulley system connected to chains and rope. I also made a lookout tower to spot enemies coming from afar. I used blackstone to match my shadowy theme and made the tower tall enough for me to be able to see enemies coming from miles. Finally, I placed the fifth fossil on the pedestal to admire my hard work thus far, but there was still more to do. I just need one more and I should be able to take on the Radiant Rex. Hey Bronzo, I want to show you something. 
I followed Jack, and he showed me what he had built. It was an entire full-scale statue of me. Wow, Jack, this is amazing. I wanted to make this as a thank you for all that you've done for me. Aw, oh, thank you. You're the best buddy I could ever ask for. But can I ask one more thing of you? For you, Bronzo, anything. I need you to drop a like on this video. Comment down below which fossil power was your favorite. Also, if you enjoyed this content, subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit the notification bell so you never miss another video. Absolutely, I'm gonna go do that right now. Just then, the Radiant Rex flew over. What, where's he headed? I decided I should follow close and find out. On days 93 and 94, I tailed behind the Radiant Rex. He led me right to the final fossil. That dummy doesn't know what he just did. I creeped around so I could listen in and gain some intel. He was talking things over with the general. That wasn't good news. Looks like that pesky Shadow Raptor hasn't found this one yet. Good. What should we do with the relic, sir? Absorb its power for ourselves? Not yet. I must make the correct preparations. If done incorrectly, all of my plans will be ruined. I understand. I will take the relic and hide it where the dumb shadow chicken will never find it. And don't underestimate him. That raptor is smarter than he lets on. What's that supposed to mean? Don't worry, sir. I won't let him get his nasty claws on it. The second he reveals himself, I will eliminate him. You are better not. I'm more than willing to show you why I am the leader here. I will make you regret ever crossing me. I would do anything to serve you, O Radiant One. I vow that I will not let you down, and I will fight until my last breath. I know that I can rely on you, General. The general picked up the fossil. Then the both of them left with it in hand. Looks like they're gonna try to set me up. Good thing I'm one step ahead. I chased after them, hot on their tail. I was getting that last fossil, one way or another. On days 95 and 96, I arrived at a large vault to find the Radiant Rex already leaving. The place was crawling with Radiant Raptors. They were walking around everywhere, including at the entrance. They must have it locked up inside. I better stay hidden. I crouched low and snuck around the surrounding boulders and trees. So long as I stayed in the shadows, there was no way they could see me. Thanks to my dark scales, I was about to reach the vault entrance when a raptor spotted me. Oops, maybe that doesn't work as well as I thought. Before he could say anything else, I hit him with a shadow attack and killed him. Then I dashed off and hid. Thankfully, the other raptors just looked around and walked away. That was close. On days 97 to 98, I headed inside of the vault. There on a pedestal was the sixth fossil. Quick as a dart, I dashed forward and snatched it. When I grabbed it, nothing happened. Wait, is this a fake? <laughs> Looks like you fell right into my trap. Prepare to die. There's no way I'm going down here. We'll see about that. Yeah, I guess we will. This time, I was the first one to attack. I slugged my shadow ball at him with as much force as possible. It slammed into him, enraging him. The general advanced and breathed blistering hot fire at me, shooting blasts in rapid succession. It felt like each one held the force of a thousand suns, impossibly radiant. The general was something else. I was on the defensive now, trying to use my attacks to keep him away from me. Similar to last time, he cloaked himself in flames to become a living fire and bring the heat ever closer to me. I was lucky to have my Shadow Raptor blade that let me dart around so fast. Eventually, the general had enough and flew up into the air to rain fire from above. It was a nasty trick because he knew it would be harder for me to hit him from the ground. I figured he had to be low on health though, or else he wouldn't have retreated. I mustered up the final bit of power within me and killed the general. Ha! Take that! Upon dying, the general dropped the real fossil, and I gained 10 more hearts and a final power. It was a fire burst, similar to what Shane used to have. Time to make the final preparations. On day 99, I returned home to tell Jack the good news. There was a fake fossil, but then I killed the general, and there it was, the real fossil. Oh, and I got a super cool new power. That's awesome. What are you waiting for? Go put it in the treasure room. Jack was right. I went to my pedestal room and placed the last fossil down. Suddenly, I was hit with a vision. I was in a dream world with my parents standing right before me. Mom, Dad, is that you? It is, son, and we want you to know something. What is it? First of all, we're proud of you. 
You've come so far since your first day in this world. Thank you. I've fought hard to get here. We know. We watched you. You did? Of course, son. We were always watching over you since day one. The battle ahead, though, will be unlike anything you've ever faced. It won't be easy. But we believe in you. You can do it. How do you know if I'm strong enough to win? You've overcome so much so far. We know that even if this battle is hard, you will see it through. You're right. I love you both, and I'll avenge everyone. I swear. Good luck, son. And look up. I snapped back to reality. Look up. I heeded the warning, only to find that the roof of my base was broken open. The Radiant Rex had arrived, and he meant business. On day 100, I was in the final confrontation between myself and the Radiant Rex. Looks like we finally meet again. At last, I've hunted you down. Your pathetic life will end here, and nothing will stop me from eliminating the rest of you shadow creatures. You, your friends, everything you know will be hunted to extinction. Unfortunately for you, I've got a few new tricks up my sleeve. Oh, really? Well, you're not the only one. In a flash, he and I were teleported away from my base and into a huge sky arena. It was a major update from his original sky base. Why must you destroy all life? Shouldn't a being of radiance want to help and create life? You are wrong, shadow creature. It is you who is destroying the light. I must read the world of shadow. Shadow and light can live in harmony, just as it has for billions of years. No, the darkness must be gone. I won't let that happen. I've worked so hard to keep balance. All your effort is for naught. Let the warmth of my light wash over you and embrace your end. I disagree, Radiant Rex. This is your end. In a fury, I attacked, darting forward with the power of my Shadow Raptor Blade. Quick as a bullet, I slashed back and forth, slicing at the Radiant Rex everywhere I could reach. The life began to drain from him, but he was tough enough to shake it off. With a roar, he started to charge a Radiant attack. Motes of light gathered around him, collecting into a huge beam that he blasted straight at me. He followed up by raining down light rays at me, some catching me directly enough to set me on fire. I countered with my frost attacks at him, and he was all too quick to send stars shooting right back. That blinded me. The Radiant Rex was by far the most difficult foe I had ever faced. Not only was he powerful, but I had the whole weight of the world on my shoulders. But that same weight that made it tougher also drove me farther. There was no way I would let Radiant Rex win. Not this time or ever again. I could tell he was getting desperate. He pulled out his blasting attacks that started to destroy the very arena we were on. I knew that this was it. It was now or never. In a last burst of strength, I unleashed the most powerful shadow ball I had ever used. It hit the Radiant Rex head on, defeating him at long last. I had won! Suddenly, I felt my consciousness transport into another dinosaur body. My journey had only just begun. On day one, I spawned in as a baby dinosaur, only to find hundreds of meteors hurling right at me and my parents. Bronzo, run! As they slammed into the earth, one hit me. Ah! From the crater of ooze that was left behind, I emerged as a mutant dino. Suddenly, tons of mutant monkeys began pouring out of the ooze alongside their leader, known as Toxicus. It seems we have some weaknesses. Gods, kill him. The horde launched themselves at me and my parents. We fought for our lives, but the amount of monkeys seemed endless. I tried using my new power to help us out. I spat acid and fought some of the monkey horde attacking us. It seemed like our fighting was in vain because out of the ooze, more and more monkeys continued to pour out. Finally, Toxicus had enough waiting around. He shot out several beams of poisonous energy that arced up and hit my parents, killing them immediately. No! Dad! Mom! You there, go spread my mutant gene and infect others. Why would I help you? You killed my parents! I shot my acid at him, but it had no effect. You think poison hurts me? It only makes me and my minions stronger. Do my beating, or you'll end up just like your mother and father. There was no point in resisting now. Fine, I'll do it. 
I realized on day two that even though I was a mutant, there were still bigger threats to be wary of. If I wanted to succeed, I needed to keep myself safe from unwanted trouble. Looks like it's time to build then. I decided I wanted to build a base that represented my new mutant lifestyle. I started by gathering some wood to make a wooden pickaxe. I used my new pick to gather stone for a set of stone tools, including an axe, sword, and better pickaxe. Tools acquired. Let's get some building blocks. I began gathering cobblestone and lots of it. Once I gathered enough, I started my base. I placed the cobblestone for walls, as well as diorite for the roof and wood floors to make a nice structure that I'd fit in even if I get bigger and stronger. The house also resembled a T-Rex footprint from above. All right, now time to make it less boring. I started to spit toxins on it and blocks transformed just like I hoped. They changed from plain old cobblestone to cool mutant looking blocks. I finished putting some necessities inside my new home and then continued my building by digging out a moat around the base before using my ability to fill it up with toxic liquid. It took a little while to build up enough spit, but eventually the moat was filled. Ha <laughs> ha! If anything falls in this, then surely they'll mutate. I'm so smart. On days three and four, I was admiring my new moat as a small dino showed up and saw me. He was all alone. Hey, you're just in time for my pool party. Pool party? Yep, I have a cool new green pool to swim in. Check it out. Oh, really? Let me see. The little dino ran over to look and slipped in accidentally without me even having to coax him further. He rose out of the acid as a mutated version like me. What happened to me? Why do I look funny? Haha, <laughs> you're my new buddy now. I'm gonna name you Sting. I guess Sting is a cool name, but... One sec, let me build you something. I rushed inside and started working on a room for Sting to stay in. I made a place for Sting with nice beds and his own personal crafting area. We used some mutated leaves and vines to make the entrance a bit more private and interesting. Sting walked out to talk after we'd finished. It looks really cool. Thank you for that. But uh, my mom won't be happy, I think. She barely lets me leave the house as is. It's all right. You're in good hands here. Well, if you say so, my mom was getting on my nerves anyways. Then you're free to stay as long as you want. Our conversation was cut short by my stomach growling as I started getting hungry. Guess I better grab some food. I'll be back soon, buddy. On days five and six, I went out looking for some grub. Along the way, I came across a dino village holding a rally. I better stay out of the way or I'm a goner. My fellow dinosaurs, there is a virus. I said there is a virus spreading. It's taking our own and corrupting the community. You may I have seen one of those mutant freaks of nature. They were brought by an unknown mutant monkey species. But be assured, we will stop them before they go too far. I should lay low and grow my mutant army before getting too much attention on me. Ah, and I'm still hungry. I escaped silently and found a field of prehistoric chickens. Though they were still regular chickens. I fought them with ease and got all their delicious meat. I cooked them quickly and got to munchin. Oh man, this tastes so good. I headed back home, but along the way, I ran into some trouble. It was two of Redhorn's foot soldiers. That's him. He's the one that's been working with the monkeys. You're going down, Frankenstein. I attacked the two dinos using my poison sludge against them and my sword. They were fast and had teeth so sharp it would pierce my skin. Just give in already. The mutated side is better. Never. I'll never join you monsters. Well then, I have no choice. I managed to focus on one of the dinosaurs and covered them in tons of my toxins, eventually converting them. Whoa, I feel great now. Stronger even. Ah, no, no, I'm out of here. Thanks for converting me. My name's Shredder, by the way. I felt bad that I converted Shredder and made him lose a friend, but I had to do what I was told to do. Nice to meet you, Shredder. Follow me back to my base and let's get you settled in. I returned home with Shredder on days seven to nine and introduced him to Sting. Shredder, that's a cool name. Thanks, Sting is a cool name too. Thanks, Bronzo gave it to me. It's way cooler than my original name. What was your original name? Uh, maybe I'll tell you guys later. It's pretty bad. No worries, we won't make fun of you when you tell us. Anyway, this is great. Great, now I have two mutated friends. Let's build you a spot in the base, Shredder. Shredder and I got to work, making a place for him to stay, using the same techniques as the rest of the base for a combo of natural and mutated. I hoped that by adding more mutants to my base, I could begin to spread the mutation faster. Once we finished, I talked with Shredder a bit more. I like it, thank you. 
You're welcome. Now, I need to tell you about your mission now that you're part of this team. Wait on me. All right, your mission is to help me convert more dinosaurs to become strong mutants like us. Simple enough, right? Yeah, that's pretty simple. Except for Redhorn, he might be an issue. His people are very loyal to him, and he's protective of them as well. Hmm, then our best solution would be to convert Redhorn into a mutant first, so his people follow willingly. I'll handle that myself later. For now, you go on. I've got other things to work on. I left Shredder to do his job and start looking for Toxicus. I traveled for a bit and found not Toxicus, but a mutant monkey outpost. Don't state your business. I'm looking for Toxicus. Have you seen him? Nope, wouldn't tell you if I did. I tried asking some of the other nearby monkeys but they weren't helpful either. You'll never be one of us. Toxicus is just using you for your potential. You're useless to him otherwise. You're lying. You're just saying that because he likes me best. Ha, huh, that's hilarious. You know what? Why don't you go ask him yourself? You were looking for him anyways, right? Here, take this and get lost. The monkey threw a map to the main kingdom in front of me. Fine, I will. I'll show you moldy looking apes who he likes best. Good luck, hairless chicken. <laughs> I ignored his comment and left in a huff. I followed the map to the mutant kingdom on days 10 through 12. I was making good headway until I ran into trouble. It was Sting's mom. She definitely did not look happy. How are you today, miss? You, what did you do with my son? Nothing, he's fine. Well, he is a bit mutated now, but he's fine. He loves it. He's what? That's it, you're going to pay for that. We started to fight and I was worried I wouldn't be strong enough to fight her off. I didn't want to hurt her too badly either, since she was still Sting's mother. I could tell she was not going to let me run this time. Please, I don't want to hurt you. It's too late for that. You took my son, you monster. She wouldn't listen to anything I said. If you won't stop, then I'll have no choice but to mutate you too. I readied myself to charge her with my toxins, but before I had the chance to, Sting appeared and broke up the fight. Stop, stop it, both of you. Ed, is that you, sweetie? Huh? Egg? Yes, Mom, it's me, but I go by Sting now. I, I see. Are you alright? What happened to you? You look so different. I'm fine. If anything, I actually feel stronger than before. Oh, I'm so glad you're okay. You could have at least told me before you decided to move out suddenly. You know you wouldn't have let me leave if I had, but I'm sorry I worried you. Please don't turn her into a mutant. As much as I enjoy it, I don't think she will. So please don't. Hmm, okay, but only cause I like you, Sting. Thank you, Bronzo. Well, since my son isn't hurt and seems happy with his new life, I won't fight you anymore. But what you're doing still feels wrong. I have no choice. It's to do this and live or die and it spreads regardless. Fine, but I hope you can find some other way around this soon. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, uh, I mean, goodbye, Sting. Mama loves you. Goodbye, Mom. Don't worry, I'll still come visit. Sting's mother laughed, and I could tell Sting was feeling conflicted. It's okay. Everything will turn out all right. Go on back to our home for now and get some rest. Okay, Bronzo. I went back to following the map between days 13 and 15 and finally made it to the mutant kingdom. Yes, time to get some answers. I started to walk in, but was stopped by some guard. Hold up, bud. You ain't allowed inside. Monkeys only. Seriously? But I'm Toxicus's right-hand man, and I need to talk to him. No, now get it and go do what you're supposed to do. Work for us. Just then, Toxicus himself came out. Oh no, that's no way to treat our prized one, you buffoons. But sir, I- That's enough. Now then, please come in, Bronzo. Follow me. Yes, sir. I followed him and the guard angrily grumbled something as I entered. This thing is special in my foot. I brushed it off and followed Toxicus to his main balcony. I apologize for the rudeness. Those guards will be punished for their lack of manners, I assure you. So, what brings you here to the kingdom? Well, I was looking for more direction now that I've been making some progress. But then some of the monkeys I ran into were telling me that I'm just being used. Is that true? Why, of course not. They're lying to you just because they are jealous. You are vitally important to the mutant cause. Once every dinosaur is mutated, we can all live in peace with stronger abilities and no one needs to die. You will lead the dinos into their new happy lives. Uh, yeah, maybe.
maybe we could stop mutating the dinosaurs and still live in peace? No. <clears throat> I mean, no. The Dinosaur Chief Redhorn is forming a rebellion against you and I. If we stop now, who knows how far he will go. You must see firsthand that the mutation is a blessing to your kind. Yeah, you're right, I guess. I see you're still concerned. I know what will cheer you up. Some new equipment. Tack, Tack, where are you? A very normal looking monkey ran in just then. Oh, um, sorry sir. At your service, what can I do for you? Ah, there you are. See that our good friend here is upgraded with some of our best equipment, will you? Right away. Uh, please, follow me. On days 16 to 20, I followed Tack into another type of armory room. Tack seemed to be very kind, which was very unlike the other monkeys. So Tack, why are you not mutated? There's so much power that comes with it. Sure, the mutation does grant immense power, but it causes really bad side effects like anger, nausea, shorter life. Okay, okay, I get it. Anyway, to keep me as the lead scientist, it was decided it was best that I stayed normal. That way my brain doesn't get scrambled and stuff. That's an important aspect of my work after all. That makes sense. I hope it doesn't happen to me. Well, just between you and me, I'm working on a serum to cure the mutant gene. I never really wanted this to happen, but I was forced to do it, so I want to create a solution. This news gave me some mixed feelings. I wasn't sure whether to snitch on Tack or let it be. Well, that's interesting to know, Tack. Thanks for telling me. Of course. Just try to keep it between you and me. Anyway, let's get you suited up. Tack reached into a chest, pulled out some gear, and threw it to me. It was a full set of tungsten armor. Thanks, Tack. I hope I see you around more often. No worries, friend. Good luck out there. On days 21 to 24, I went home and thought about what Tack had said. I had kind of been forced to do Toxicus's bidding, just like Tack. I wasn't sure how to feel about it. Eventually, I made it home where I found some monkey guards arguing with Sting. Listen, listen, we ain't moving. Well, I don't want you here. Hey, what's going on? These guys are here to watch us or something. Whoa, what? Do you not trust us or something? We've been nothing but good to the mutant forces. Yeah, well, orders are orders, and they to keep an eye on you guys here. Ah, uh, whatever. Sting, I need a word with you. In private. I took Sting into the base. Look, Sting, I think I'm really having doubts about all this mutant stuff. Well, what do we do about it? I spoke with a monkey scientist. Tack, don't tell anyone, but he might be coming up with a cure to reverse it all. That's good news. But what about the monkey guards? They're still out there. Hmm, are you ready to fight? <laughs> I like your style. Okay, let's take him down. Sting and I rushed out of our base together and attacked the monkey guards. Oh, oh, what are you doing? We're breaking free from your rule. I continued to spit acid and Sting threw out his own poison. Finally, the monkeys were defeated. We've officially crossed the line now, Sting. After this, word is gonna spread fast about our betrayal. On days 25 to 29, I figured if I was going to help Tack discover a cure, my only choice was to continue to mutate. The monkeys were powerful, so I needed to keep my powers to defeat them. I headed back to the mutant kingdom, avoiding everyone I could see. I was hoping to find Tack out in the open. Luckily, he was standing in the middle of a courtyard. Psst, Tack, turn around! What are you doing here? Everyone's looking for you after word spread that you killed two guards. Man, word spreads quick. Anyway, I want to help you with the cure. That's fantastic. I will need some materials, but I'm not allowed to leave this compound. Remember these three things. Sectoid Queen Claw, Molten Alloy, Time Gem. If you get those, I guarantee I can finish my work and cure this mutation. You got it, Tack. Tack, 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 where are you? Come here this instant. Oh no, Toxicus is calling me. I have to go. I left Tack and quickly exited the mutant kingdom to go and search for the materials Tack needed. On days 30 to 34, I figured that if I was going to be searching for those ingredients, I would need better tools. I found a cave and mined myself some iron first. I would need this for the diamonds I set out to find. Luckily for me, it didn't take long to find enough diamonds to make a full tool set. I exited the cave and to my surprise, there was a mutant dinosaur waiting for me there. One that I had never seen before. It looked like it was brainwashed. Bronzo. The monkeys send their regards. What? Before I could say anything else, the mutant dinosaur attacked. It seemed to have powers just like mine. It spit out acid. It ouch. It hurt. Hey, 
Hey, you don't have to do this. I was told to, so I must. I'm working on a cure. Please, stop. I don't want to hurt you. Uh, no, I have to do this. It was no use. I had to fight back. I used my own acid powers against the mutant dinosaur, spitting out blasts after blasts of it. It was a hard match since we both had similar abilities, but eventually the mutant dino was defeated. I was so sad I had to kill it. I almost didn't realize what happened next. Whoa, how did that happen? I was suddenly grown into a bigger form. I had 10 more hearts and what appeared to be a new poison ability that let me shoot poison bubbles. I must have absorbed the other dinosaur's mutation. This has gone too far. It's time to leave. As I left, little did I realize that there was a monkey spying on me. On days 35 to 39, I was traveling when I stopped in my tracks. I was getting really frustrated that I had gone so far and not found any signs of the ingredients so far. I was pacing back and forth, trying to think of what to do, when a little voice called out to me. It was a monkey. Um, excuse me. Oh, please don't eat me. Huh. Oh, I won't hurt you. Unless you're with Toxicus. No, no, I, I, I swear. I'm Coco, one of Dr. Tack's first cured subjects. I followed you because it looked like you needed help. Whoa, nice to meet you. Oh, well, you as well, but we need to hurry. As time goes on, those with weaker minds will become fully corrupted just like the last dinosaur you faced. Then it'll be too late for them. I thought back to my friends Sting and Shredder. If I didn't hurry, they could lose their minds as well. Okay, what do we need to do? I can help you find what you need. Let's start with the time gem. For that, we'll need to venture deep into the center of the earth. That's awesome. I never would have figured that one out. Let's go then. I followed Coco into a nearby crater. She really seemed to know her way around. She didn't get lost once, even though we navigated through many, many tunnels. Eventually, we were at the center of the earth. The area was ginormous. There were all different types of ores and gems scattered within the walls. It looked like a paradise. Okay, time gem has to be around here somewhere. We looked around for a little bit on days 40 to 44, when we finally found the time gem. There was a slight issue though. An old monkey was guarding the pool of water it was in, and there was some kind of force field. This isn't just any pool of water. This is diamond water, the purest water to exist. It and I, the sage of this place, are tasked with protecting it. Yes, we need it to help cure the mutation that's spreading above ground. Hmm. In that case, you must help me first. Assist me in rebuilding this forest. Part of it was burnt down in a catastrophic fire not too long ago. Do this and I will grant you access to this diamond pool and you may take the time gem. How are we supposed to do that? I thought for a moment, then I remembered my new mutant ability. Maybe it could increase the growth of nature around here. One more thing. To be able to rebuild the forest, you must first defeat the colony of fire ants that lies nearby. They're the ones that started the fire and do not belong here. You got it. With the sage's directions, I quickly located the nest of fire ants. They were quick work. They stood no chance against my new abilities. One by one, they went down, and then I destroyed the colony to make sure they wouldn't come back. Ha! No more bugging this area. With that taken care of, I turned to the burned down forest. All right, time to test this out. I shot out my poison bubble power. Almost in an instant, the forest sprang up, once more full of life. I went back to where the sage was, and he seemed very pleased with the results. Very good. You may now pass into the diamond pool. Just then, the force field went away, so I wadded through the shallow waters to where the time gem stood on a pedestal. One down, two to go. On days 45 to 49, I returned back to the base to check up on Sting and Shredder, ready to introduce Coco to them. However, there was a new mutant dinosaur at the base, one I hadn't seen before. Hey guys, this is Coco. She's on our side. And who's that? Oh, this guy? Sup? This is a new guy, Chad. I mutinized him per your orders. Soon the whole world will be mutinized. Yeah, about that, Shredder. We're trying to find a cure to reverse this. What? No! 
This is amazing. This is the best I've ever felt. And I won't let you take that away from me. Yeah, I feel great. I don't want to go back to being some lame normal dino. I started to think they were being mind controlled by Toxicus. I had to try and calm them down. I did not want to kill them like I did the other mind controlled dinosaur. Shredder, relax, dude. Remember what we're fighting for here. Nah, man, I'm out of here. Come on, Chad, let's go. Right behind you. Sting, are you still with me? Yeah, man, I'm done with this mutation. And if I'm being honest, I miss my mom. That's good to know. Coco, I'm gonna build you a new place to feel more comfortable tomorrow. For now, you can take Shredder's room. Okay, sounds good. I woke up on days 50 to 53, ready to build Coco a cool monkey treehouse. I connected two trees with a nice bridge, adding a roof, then made him a bed and some decorations. Coco made a hammock for nap times and finished it all off with a pool and diving board. So what do you think? This is way better than back home. I'd love to chill here, but we need to find the next ingredient. How about the molten alloy? Where would we get that? There's a volcano on the southern hemisphere. Then let's go there. But there lives a molten guardian. Defeat them and you get the molten alloy. I think I got this. Big monsters are nothing for a mutant dino. Love the enthusiasm. Let's go. Actually, I think I'm going to go solo on this one. Keep an eye on Sting for me, would ya? Uh-huh. You got it. Good luck. I then left to make my way to the southern hemisphere. Wow, I'm going down under. I hope everything isn't upside down. Along the way, I ran into a familiar red dinosaur. Well, well, well. If it isn't the mutant dino, I've heard a lot about you. What do you want, red horn? I want you. It seems that you have been causing a lot of trouble. I said trouble in the community. Joining that toxic ape and all. I'm not with Toxicus anymore. He is crazy for wanting to turn everyone into mutants and ignorant to the long lasting effects of it. It does not look like you stopped working for him. You're still a mutant. I said you're still a mutant. An even bigger one now from what I've been told. Well, there isn't a cure yet, Horn. I still don't believe you. I say, I say, I still don't believe you. All I know is you must be stopped. One way or another. One way or another. He started to attack me. He had a bite attack and some kind of slash that came from his horn. I didn't want to use any of my toxic powers because I did not want to turn him into a mutant too. I don't want to fight you. It doesn't matter what you want. It's what I need to do for my people. For my people. Killing me is not what's good for your people. You're the problem. You must be eradicated. I can't allow that to happen. I knew I couldn't defeat Redhorn, so I had to do the only thing I could to get out of the situation. Run! Oh, no, you don't. I ran a lot faster than him and was able to get away pretty easily. Coward! You can't run forever! For the days of 54 to 58, I made it to a volcano in the southern hemisphere of the world. There were fire creatures all around the place. Guess things are about to get hot. I ran in head first to fight the fiery freaks. Their fire was rough on my skin, but being a mutant, their fire powers were nothing compared to me. I defeated the last one and then started my journey up the volcano. This is a lot of steps up. After a lot of climbing, I made it to the top of the volcano. There waiting for me was a molten beast. You think you can defeat me and take my molten alloy? Uh, yeah, that's why I'm here. Then you are a fool. The molten protector defended his alloy with fire explosive attacks, as well as a fire breath. Their explosions were a lot for me. I could barely keep up and any time I tried to use my sword on him, I would be met with more fire in my face. Stay away or burn. The Molten Beast was my toughest foe yet. They were unlike anything I had ever fought before. I had to win. The fate of the world depended on me getting that alloy. I kept spamming my poison shots at him, but ultimately, my sword did the most damage to him. Finally, after a long battle, I hit the monster with a winning blow to the head. 
No! I swore to protect this ancient artifact. I can't let it go to some mutant abomination. Sorry, that's exactly what's happening. One last hit and the beast was slain and they dropped the molten alloy. Sweet, only one more artifact left to obtain. With that, I started my journey back home. While traveling back home, I ran into Sting's mom. You, I want my son back. I miss him dearly and I'm so worried about him. You're right, it's time he goes back with you. And if you don't let him come with me, I'll... Wait, what did you say? The mutation has become too much for him. I'm worried he might change even more. I think he really needs your help, more now than ever. Well, that's great. What? I mean that I'm getting him back. Not great that he's feeling so sick. Please take me to him. You got it. I had Sting's mom follow me back to the base, but when we got there, things did not look good. Get back here, you darn dirty ape. Sting was harassing Coco. You should mutate too. <laughs> Sting, stop this at once. Leave that poor mammal alone. Sting wouldn't listen to his mother, so I had to intervene with a bonk on Sting's head. Sting, stop messing with Coco. He's our friend. You don't get it, Brazo. Everyone needs to be a mutant. I guess you forgot that's why we are doing all this. Doing what? I thought we were trying to reverse the mutation. Why would we ever do that? I feel so strong like this. You're starting to sound like Shredder. You're right. Maybe it's time I blow this popsicle stand and go meet back up with Shredder and Chad. At least they know how to have a good time as a mutant. Sting, don't leave. See ya, losers. I was in shock. I didn't expect any of this to come from my best friend Sting. I couldn't think, and I just let him walk away. What is this all about? What did you do to my poor egg? I had to tell her the bad news. Eventually, the mutation finds its way into our minds and corrupts us fully. I'm afraid this has happened to Sting. This is awful. I just want my egg back. This is all your fault, evil dino. I'm sorry. I'm trying to right this wrong. We are so close to finding a cure. You better be. I'm not leaving until you get him back. For days 63 to 66, I was searching for Sting. I followed his tracks, but he was a lot faster than me. Sting! Sting! Eventually, I caught up with him, but he wasn't alone. Shredder! Chad! Wait, is that also Redhorn? Come and get me! <laughs> Chase me, Redhorn! <laughs> it looked like they were taunting Redhorn to get him to mutate as well. I got to help him. I noticed that the ground was a trap and Redhorn was gonna fall victim. Redhorn, don't move any closer to them. Don't listen to him. He's a dumbo and your mortal enemy. You're right. I'll never listen to you. You turned Shredder to a mutant. He was my best soldier, my main man. Now look at him. I said, look at him. Yeah, look at me. I'm a freak. I need to be taken care of. <laughs> yeah, taken care of. Before I could defend myself, Redhorn ran to the group of mutant dinos, and he fell into a pit of acid. Ah, ah, what is this stuff? No! Ah, I could hear him scream from below, and then it suddenly stopped. It's working! Out from the hole climbed Redhorn, now a mutated dinosaur, like the rest of us. Yes, I feel. I said I feel like a true leader now. He then turned to look at me. Bring me that dinosaur there, dead or alive. Sure thing, boss. I had no choice but to run as fast as I could. Get back here, you traitor. Surprisingly, I was able to outrun Shredder, but not Chad. That boy was fast. He was able to corner me down. Chad, you don't have to do this. It's just you and me, Bronzy boy. I don't want any trouble, Chad. I know you're probably a cool guy and all, so I'm sure we can. I don't want to hear it from a lame like you. Chad then lunged at me, and the fight started. I don't want to have to do this. Well, I do. <laughs> Chad had a similar poison spit ability as me, but since I was already mutated, it didn't do much to me. And since I was so much larger than him, I was able to take him out. No! After all the commotion, I could hear the other two searching for me. He's gotta be over here. No, I heard something this way, you dummy. What you call it a dummy, dummy? While they were bickering, I was able to make my escape. I hid behind some trees during days 67 to 70. Sting and Shredder were still on my tail. He's over this way. I just know it. Oh man, what do I do now? I need that last ingredient, the sectoid queen's claw. I thought about it for a while, but had no clue of where it could be until I had a memory talking to Tack. Oh. 
And before I forget, the sectoid queen's claw is located in the tall tree lakes. Hmm, I must have not been paying attention when he said that. At least I know where to go now. Lucky for me, I was already at the lakes. And without surprise, there was the sectoid queen, enjoying her last day on this planet. Oh, you are silly by coming here, dinosaur. I'm smarter than you could ever be, and I'm gonna need your claw. Come and get it. The queen used her deadly razor leaf attack on me, and it cut me pretty badly. I retaliated with some powerful poison shots. Just give in already. You'll do more good dead than alive. I charged at the queen, and with one final blow, I destroyed her and obtained her claw. I did it. I got all three ingredients for the cure. With all that fighting going on, I had made lots of noise, and Shredder found me. I thought I heard a crybaby over here. I'm not fighting you, Shredder. So be it. I had no choice. Shredder was attacking me whether I put up a fight or not. So I did. His bite was powerful and pierced my armor. I still had the upper hand due to my size and strength. I'm sorry I have to do this to you, Shredder. Right before I was going to end him, a sleeping dart hit him, and he was knocked out. I looked to see who shot it, and it was Coco. Hurry! We gotta run before he wakes up! I followed Coco to a secret base during days 71 to 75. Whoa, this place is sick. When did you make this? We used to live here before living with you. It was already here, but I need some additions. Well, I can't be here. I need to deliver the ingredients to Tack. Things are getting worse. That's gonna be a problem. What do you mean? You're not very stealthy, if I'm being honest. Well, you are, so maybe you can teach me a thing or two. Let's take this outside. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my back to you, and you'll try to sneak up on me. If I hear you, I'll turn around, and you'll have to restart. Easy. The first try was horrible. I ran up to Coco, making lots of noise, and she turned. Well, that was awful. Try again. On the second attempt, I tried to walk towards her, but when I got closer, she still heard me. Nope, try again. On the third attempt, I snuck all the way to Coco, and she didn't even realize I was behind her. Knock, knock. Ah, you did it! I think you can sneak into the mutant base without making too much noise. I'll try. See you, Coco. I made my way to find Tack on days 76 to 80. As I did so, I was interrupted by angry yelling. It was Sting. There you are. I'll kill you. No running this time. Sting had already gone mad and started to attack. Sting, no! I don't want to hurt you. It's too late for that. Now fight me. I fought him back, trying to hurt enough that he would hopefully stop. But to no avail, I was much stronger than him and would have had no problem defeating him. But I was desperate to keep him alive. Unfortunately, he was persistent and refused to leave me alone. Sting, egg, please. You've still got to be in there somewhere. Ah, uh, shut up. It was no use. I didn't want to do it. But if I didn't take him down, then thousands of other dinosaurs would die. I had no choice but to kill my best friend. I'm sorry, Sting. I'm sorry for everything. I ended him with one final blow. I mourned his death, but knew it was my only option at the moment. Goodbye, my friend. I'll never forget you. I couldn't bring myself to continue the mission until I told his mom the sad news. So I headed back to the base to tell her. She was already waiting once I arrived. Bonzo, did you find my son? Where is he? I'm sorry. The mutation had already taken his mind. He's gone. My, my egg is gone? She started to cry, but stopped herself suddenly. No, I don't have time to mourn yet. This is all that evil Toxicus' fault. If he's not taken down, then Egg's death will be in vain. Bronzo, I want to take down Toxicus in any way possible, no matter what. What do you mean by that? Mutate me. What? But I... I said mutate me. No, it's too dangerous. You'll go crazy, just like Sting. I don't care about that. I can hold out long enough until you get the cure. Now do it. Okay, I hope you're right. I did as she asked and turned her into a mutant as well. Oh, wow. No wonder my son was so excited about this. I even have powers now? She tested her powers out. She was definitely ready to help fight now. We're going to get that cure. Let's go. On days 81 to 85, I returned to the mutant kingdom. All right, Sting's mom. I need you to stay here and watch the outside perimeter while I sneak in. You got it. Stay Stay safe. I snuck in and stealthily slipped past guards and other monkeys. When I got to Tack's usual spot, he wasn't
wasn't there. Just as I was sniffing around for any clues, I overheard two monkeys talking. Can't believe that cat guy was a mole all along. Allied with that dino. <laughs> Good thing Toxic has captured him and put him in prison. Yeah, in my opinion, prison ain't good enough for that guy. He went bananas. He should be dealt with. Oh no, they're gonna kill Tack. I need to go save him. I searched around for the jail. I knew it had to be somewhere nearby. Luckily, since I knew my way around, I was able to find it. It was at the top of one of the tallest towers. Tack, I'm breaking you out. Let's go. Thank you. We made it back down the tower and to the courtyard when the worst thing possible happened. Halt, there will be no more running away. It was Toxicus. He didn't look so good. It's time for my final form. He then transformed before my eyes. No, I am unstoppable. We charged at each other, and Toxicus had a new axe that made shockwaves around where he attacked. So I had to dodge as best as I could while using my own poison powers. Ah, take this and this. No matter what power I spat at Toxicus, nothing seemed to really affect him. Tack tried punching him as well, but that hardly left a scratch. There is only one way to deal with traitors. Toxicus shot something at Tack and managed to hit him square on, leaving Tack seriously injured. I was quickly running out of options. Suddenly, as if sensing our desperation, Sting's mom appeared behind us and dealt Toxicus a solid blow. No, we need you. Trust me, it's the only way. She charged at Toxicus, giving me and Tack time to run away. I'll never forget you. On days 86 through 89, I returned to Coco's secret secret base with Tack. We don't have long. I need to tell you what I've discovered about Toxicus. Tell me, quick! He's crafting a weapon that can turn any creature into a mutant with one hit. That's not good! How long will the cure take to make? It's almost done. I just need a few more hours. Not fast enough! We turned to see that Redhorn and Shredder had arrived at our secret base. <laughs> Toxicus said you would be here in Coco's not-so-secret base. Yeah, Toxicus sent us here after he finished out Sting's mom. Sting's mom? No! I tried to stall while Tack finished up the cure as fast as he could. Unfortunately, they didn't listen, and I could tell they were ready to attack. On days 90 to 92, Redhorn and Shredder charged at me. I was doing my best to keep them away from Tack, but it wasn't going very well. Just then, Tack came out. I've got it. Tack threw the completed serum onto Shredder. It exploded, and in moments, he looked like he was back to normal. Huh? What? Hang on. What's going on? No time to talk right now, Shredder. Watch out. Now take this. Tack threw another serum at Redhorn, who also went back to normal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What am I doing here? Wait a second. I'm back. Thank you. Told you I was working on a cure. Sorry for doubting you. Okay, Bronzo. Are you ready to get back to normal as well? I can't do that yet. I need this power to stop Toxicus. After that, though, absolutely. Understood. In case you need them, though, here are a few cures. Take them with you. If you want to beat Toxicus, you're gonna need some training first. Your fighting form could use a few tips, and don't sweat it. I know what I'm doing. I'm a chief. On days 93 to 94, it was time to train with Redhorn. I wasn't really feeling like myself, though. You know, I don't get why they call you Redhorn. They're more gray than anything. Uh, okay, that was a bit rude. But let's get on to training. First thing is a simple mind exercise. I think you'll benefit from this. What should I do? Close your eyes and a breathe. Focus on the breath and let everything else melt away. Now with me. One, a two, in and out. I closed my eyes and tried it out. It was very peaceful. I felt more relaxed than I had in a while. Look at that! It's a working! I opened my eyes and looked at myself. I had grown into a new form. I now had 10 more hearts and a new atomic blast. Out of nowhere, I felt a burst of white hot anger and lashed out, hitting Redhorn with my new power. Ah, take this! Ouch! What was that for? I did not know why I did that. Could it have been the mutation? Whatever it was, I couldn't stay any longer. I turned tail and ran.
I had to distance myself from my friends on days 95 through 97. I could tell the mutation was affecting my mind even more. What the heck is going on? Why is this happening now? Just then, a group of mutant monkeys saw me. Well, if it isn't the mutant prodigy, ooh, you've been causing a lot of trouble for us mutant apes. So what? You guys ruined my life. I never asked for this. None of us dinos did. Well, that's too dang bad. And I really don't care. Take him away, boys. The apes charged in to capture me, but I wasn't going down easily. Ugh, no fair. We gave you those powers. Keep at it, boys. As powerful as I was, they definitely had numbers against me. I was starting to worry, but I remembered I still had the cure to use. You're not yourselves. Take this. I threw the potion on them, and they turned into normal monkeys. What, what am I doing? I need to get back to my family. <laughs> the group of monkeys all scattered, completely forgetting about me and leaving me alone. Okay, so maybe I can still control my emotions for the time being. I returned to Coco's base on days 98 through 99, feeling a little better and decided to give a speech. Gather around everyone, I have something important to say. Redhorn, Shredder, Coco, and Tack were all gathered around. It's finally time, I'm off to kill Toxicus and end this horrible mutant takeover. <laughs> Before I go, can you do me one last favor? What's that, Bronzo? I need you guys to like this video so I know you enjoyed it. Subscribe to see more videos like this one and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on the next big adventure. You got it. Should we leave a comment too? Yes. Let me know what you thought of the video and who your favorite character was. Will do. I'm on my way then. Wish me luck, guys. Good yeah, luck, Bronzo. Good luck, Bronzo. Good luck. It was day 100, and I made my way to Toxicus for the last time. I entered the mutant kingdom and found him waiting for me, alone. So, it's you who has come to stop me. How humorous. It's over, Toxicus. I have the cure to the mutant gene. I've already cured some of your own troops. <laughs> you think that matters to me? The mutant gene will live on regardless. No, you ruined my life and countless other lives already. I won't let you destroy any more. I tried to throw the cure on Toxicus and waited, but nothing happened. <laughs> you can't revert me, silly dino. I I was born like this, and with this great power, I will turn all creatures into mutants just like myself. He demonstrated a new ability I hadn't seen from him yet. It was a strong poison blast. I'm not afraid, I will stop you. I jumped at him and used my atomic blast. He countered with his ax and sent me flying backwards. That didn't stop me though. I ran back in and continued fighting with all of my abilities. You pissed. Die already. You're the real pest. He got a few more good hits on me, but I could take the hits much better with my new strength. I managed to go at him with an extra strong blow, knocking his ax away. No, my ax. As he was distracted, I took the opportunity to get several good shots in. He was much weaker without his weapon, and I was able to finally wear him down. The mutation ends now. One final blast, and he was defeated. With Toxicus gone, I finally threw the last potion on myself and was cured. The mutation was no more, but my mind soon drifted away as I transported into my next brilliant form. On day one, I was born in a giant geode-like egg under a field. I was a baby diamond dinosaur. Wow, I'm beautiful, and life is amazing. Out of nowhere came a freaky cyborg with a powerful laser gun. There you are. Who are you? He started shooting at me and I ran past him as fast as I could. I'm gonna get you no matter what or die trying. Just when I thought I had escaped the danger, I was spotted by an Ankylosaurus. Ah! He's gonna bite my ankles. I ran and hid in the trees and the Ankylosaurus couldn't get to me. I gotta be careful. I'm an easy target and it seems like everyone wants a piece of me. I found some cows and hunted a few. I tried to hunt more, but I was spotted by another predator. Ah! I quickly ran into a cave and lost them. This is getting ridiculous. Tell me about it. I turned around to see a freaky little creature with glowing red eyes. Ah! 
I ran out of the cave as fast as I could. What? On day two, I needed to make shelter. So I figured the best thing would be to live in a cavern since there would hopefully be fewer predators there. I carved myself out a nice lush cave that would be big enough for when I got bigger. I made sure to decorate it with cool cave stuff to make it fun and interesting to live in. Next, I added the basic stuff I would need to survive, like a crafting bench and furnaces. And then as a finishing touch, I built a T-Rex skull at the entrance of the cave. This skull would serve as a great way to show anyone who is passing by who lived here and hopefully scare off any foes who dare to come near. In the meantime, I would need to start getting stronger. So if anyone did come, I would be ready for them. As I was finishing up, the little dino from the cave earlier appeared. Hello. Ah, what are you doing here? As I looked at them, I realized they didn't have red eyes anymore. And I figured it must have been my imagination. It's cool, dude. I'm chill. I promise. Followed you here to make sure you're okay. My name's Bite, by the way. Why wouldn't I be okay? Oh, you seem pretty shaken up. Plus, a strange being has recently arrived in these lands and is wreaking havoc looking everywhere for something. What kind of being? Some kind of cyborg that appeared here in a big flash of light. I think they might be some kind of time traveler. Oh, yeah? I think I saw that guy yesterday. Sounds like we should stick together, buddy. Wanna live at my base? Ah, oh, that'd be great. I set to work, and pretty soon, I had a nice little living quarters for Bite. It was another little cave with a pond and a nice little moss bed. This is perfect, thanks. On day three, Bite and I were just minding our own business at the base when we were suddenly interrupted by a gang of raptors. <laughs> <laughs> Get a load of this guy, weird shiny freak. <laughs> yeah, weird shiny freak. Hey, leave him alone. He's more priceless than he even knows. Huh? What do you mean by that? Shut up. You losers are worthless. They attacked and we tried to fight them off, but they were way too strong. We ran away from them and watched them destroy our base from a distance. Smash the place, boys. Griefin is the best. We waited for hours while they griefed our base until finally they got bored and left. Left. Once they were gone, we returned to our ruined base and everything was destroyed and on fire. They even left cave graffiti on the floor. I turned to bite. Hey, uh, what did you mean earlier about me being more priceless than I know? Oh, uh, mm, nothing important. I guess because you're made of diamonds. <laughs> we should probably focus on fixing this place, huh? Yeah, let's get to work. We worked together to rebuild the base as best we could. And then once we were finished, we went off to bed. On day four, I woke up early because I couldn't sleep. I'd already fixed the base before going to bed. So I wandered around admiring our work. We rebuilt it even better than it was before, adding an indoor pool for fun. I went up to the top of the diving board and jumped off. After that, it was getting late. I went looking for Bite. I looked all over for them, but I couldn't find them anywhere. Huh, that's weird. Must have gone out for something. I went outside in the moonlight and admired the way it glistened off my diamond skin. Dang, I'm so cool. Shine bright like a diamond. I was standing near the water when suddenly I was attacked by a prehistoric crocodile. I dodged its bites as best I could, but it was really strong. Man, I really need to get stronger. The crocodile was going to kill me for sure until I was saved by a giant emerald Camarasaurus. Ah, are you gonna eat me? Well, I'm an herbivore, so no thank you. Okay, thank you. You're cool. Do you want to stay at my base? Oh, no thank you. I live with the other herbivores in Herbivore City. Oh, what's a herbivore? We don't eat meat, just plants. Oh, good for you. Thanks. Anyway, see you later. Wait, I didn't catch your name. My name's Gerald. Thanks again, Gerald. I'm Bronzo. On days five and six, I went out hunting for food. I killed a few cows and collected their meat, but I didn't eat it. I wanted to save it for later. I was heading back home when out of nowhere came the evil cyborg guy. <laughs> Come here, little dino. I'm gonna be rich. Ah! He chased after me and ran me into a small cave where I was cornered. Who are you? What do you want from me? My name's Dr. Albuquerque. Well, you can call me Albie. I'm from millions of years in the future where there's a diamond shortage. I need your diamonds to power my device and get back home. And I'm gonna sell the leftover ones for a ton of cash. He advanced on me and I knew it was all over. He was gonna kill me. But just then, I remembered the food I had collected and started chowing down on it. I transformed and grew into a medium-sized dinosaur. Whoa, uh-oh. Uh 
M nice, Dino. I roared at him with all my might and scared him so badly that he ran off. When he ran, he dropped some kind of bone tooth sword and I snagged it before he noticed. I'll be back with bigger and better future weapons to kill you with. Now that you're bigger, you'll be worth even more when I sell you. After my huge roar, Dr. Albuquerque kept running away, so I was finally able to go back home. During the days of seven through eight, I was heading home and passed through a village. It was inhabited by cavemen. Hey, there's no need to be afraid of me. Ooga booga, the end is nigh. Ooh, ooga booga. I thought to myself, cavemen didn't live at the same time as dinosaurs. Ah, oh, that's weird. Relax, guys. I'm friendly. I'm cool. That's not why they're freaking out. Bite! Where have you been? That's not important right now. Look up in the sky. As I looked up, I spotted a giant asteroid heading straight to Earth. Ah! What do we do? There's not much we can do. It's gonna kill us in approximately 91 days, 7 hours, and 9 minutes. That's strangely accurate, but there's got to be a way to stop it. I sure wish there was. Looks like it's just our destiny to all die or something. That's crazy talk. I know we can stop the asteroid. On days 9 and 10, I decided that if no one else would, I would just have to be the one to stop the approaching doom. I immediately set out to seek more strength and knowledge about how to stop the impending threat. I was searching around when I suddenly heard screaming nearby. I investigated and found a golden triceratops being chased by a big piglin thing. Go away! Leave me alone! Give me go! Give me go! Shot me go! I rushed in to help her take down the piglin creature. Together, we were able to defeat it easily, and it dropped some pork chops. You're safe now. Here, want some bacon? Oh, no, thank, thank you. you. I'm a herbivore. Huh, lots of those around these days. I guess so. Anyway, thanks for saving me. My name's Trixie. Nice to meet you, Trixie. I'm Bronzo. I noticed you're a shiny dinosaur like me. Did you come from a geode egg too? Yes, there are actually quite a few of us scattered around. But we're always in hiding since we're so easily targeted. Hmm, makes sense. I met an emerald Camarasaurus earlier. Why don't you all join together and fight back? None of the current ones were born as predators, so you're the first one who can actually fight back. Plus, well, not all ores are as strong as diamonds. Well then, I should use this speciality of mine to protect you. You can come live in my base if you want. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. With that, Trixie followed me as I led her back to the base. I brought Trixie home and began making her a place in the base during days 11 through 13. With Trixie and Bite at the base, I felt like I was really starting to have some type of dinosaur community. I decided to make Trixie's room out of golden items, since after all, she is a golden triceratops. By the end of it all, Trixie's room was super blinged out. Thanks for the safe place, Bronzo. No problem. Anything for a friend of mine. I then thought to myself, I need some protection just in case the robo guy or another bigger dinosaur tries to attack me. On that thought, I ventured into the caves and eventually found diamonds. I collected them and made myself a full set of diamond armor, since I'm a diamond dinosaur. Now, I'm an even tougher diamond. Suddenly, the cave began to rumble, and something started jittering out from deep within. It was a bunch of crystal crab monsters. Luckily, with my new armor, I was pretty tough. They kept clawing at me over and over again, but I used my new bone sword to attack them. It wasn't long before I killed the final crab. I did it! I finally beat my first ever opponents! I happily left the cavern and started heading back home to celebrate. On days 14 through 17, I was heading home when I ran into the raptor gang from earlier. Hey, Sparkle Toes, where do you think you're going? You guys better leave me alone. I'm stronger than I was before. Oh no, he's so scary. Not. <laughs> <laughs> You're just some shiny loser from, uh, uh, shiny loser town. <laughs> yeah, got him. Uh, anyways, get him. The raptors charged at me with full force. I was holding my own a little bit better than before, but all of them together were definitely still overpowering me. I needed another plan. Oh, oh, what's that? Ah! My distraction worked, and they all turned to see what was happening. Huh? Where'd he go? While they were distracted, I ran for the hills. I managed to escape them, and I made it home to my base. But I was pretty upset. 
I can't believe I still can't beat them. How am I gonna beat an evil cyborg or a giant asteroid? It's okay, Bronzo. You're gonna keep getting stronger. You're right, Bite. I just need to find a way to get stronger. But where? I'll need to think on it first. On days 18 through 21, I started by adding some additions to the base. I made a brand new room for any ore creature, decorating it with a few different ores I might encounter. Next, I got to work creating a lookout tower. This would help me look out around the base for more ore creatures, and also be notified if there were any enemies incoming. I went to Trixie's place and asked her to keep an eye out from the watchtower whenever she got the chance. Finally, I added a training area outside near the base of the watchtower, where me and my friends could train to get strong I didn't waste any time and started training on the scarecrows to improve my skills. By the time I was finished, my weapon attacks were much more accurate. I went inside to show Bite my new skills, but they were nowhere to be found. All that was left in their room was a strange looking device that looked like it was from the future. Oh no, Albi must have taken them. I knew I wasn't strong enough to fight Albi on my own. I needed to find someone who would help me get stronger. I knew Gerald was a big beefy creature and herbivores need to defend themselves too. So I figured he might have some tips and tricks for me. I searched all around for him, but I couldn't find Herbivore City. I tried asking directions, but everyone I approached ran away from me. <coughs> Wait, come back. I'm not even that scary yet. Eventually, I was able to find someone who was super chill, and he told me the way. Yeah, bruh. Just follow the pink leaves. I looked over and saw a tree with a few pink leaves on it. Oh, okay, thanks. With that, I set out to follow the pink leaves and find Herbivore City. On days 22 through 25, I spotted Herbivore City in the distance. There it is! I went up to the front, looking for Gerald, but people were wary of me. But they were at least willing to talk. What? You mean King Gerald? King Gerald? Wow! I didn't know Gerald was a king. I figured if he was the king, he was probably somewhere near his throne room. So I went all the way to the top of the pyramid and went inside. Gerald! I mean, uh, your highness. Hello, Bronzo. You can still call me Gerald, of course. Oh, okay. Sup, Jer Bear? Gerald is fine. Right, cool, sorry. Will you train me in the art of being big and strong and powerful? If you want to be as strong as me, you'll have to go through some rigorous training. He started me on some defensive training and had me spar with one of his trained guards. Finally, I had to spar with the king himself. Wow, for a herbivore, you sure are strong. Never underestimate us, Bronzo. We'll mess you up. You see my guard's horns? Freaky. He took me back to his throne room and congratulated me on my hard work. You've got a strong heart, Bronzo. You've earned this. Earned what? Oh! The king blasted me with some kind of magic dinosaur spell, granting me five more hearts and a chunk destroyer. Whoa! Awesome! I didn't even get a chance to enjoy my new strength when Dr. Albuquerque arrived out of nowhere. Dinner time! He started unleashing his weapon on all of the innocent herbivores around instantly, turning them into skeletons! What did you do, Bronzo? You let them right to us! I'm sorry! I didn't know! Dr. Alby charged at me and started blasting! He was way too strong! I tried using my sword and my new strength, but it still wasn't enough against his powerful armor! Surrender now, Diamond Dino! Never! Alby was way too strong for me, but just when I thought I was gonna die, Gerald charged in and jumped up, stomping on Dr. Alby! Take that, you overgrown gemstone! <laughs> Gerald, no! Gerald was dying. He had sacrificed himself to save me. Alby was hurt badly and forced to retreat. Gerald, I'm sorry. I promise to be more careful in the future. It's okay. I know you will set things right. You need to make peace with Dr. Alby. He's the only one who can stop the asteroid. Make peace with him? What? How? <sighs> No! 
Now that I was much stronger, I went on to look for Bite during days 26 to 29. I figured maybe the device I found could give me some answers. What's this signal coming from? As I moved, it began to beep faster and faster. This must be leading me somewhere. Eventually, it led me to a strange high-tech looking outpost. What's this odd looking dome here? I walked in and inside was Bite. They were talking to themselves with an odd looking device nearby. Hey, Bite! Uh, who are you talking to? Uh, uh, no one. I was practicing my improv skills. Oh, are you wanting to be an actor or something? Yeah, sure do. That's awesome. Wait, but why are you doing it here? I was held captive here by Dr. Albuquerque. I'm so glad to see you. Oh, well, okay. You're free now. Yay! I carried on, but I was still suspicious of Bite. I returned to the base during days 30 through 33, and I had a few herbivore guests waiting for me. Hey, what are you guys doing here? Well, we have no place to live. Not since King Gerald passed. Yeah, I'm sorry that happened, but I'll make it up to you guys. How so? Y'all can stay here if you want. Well, that would be great. I decided to dig up a huge area since I had a lot of new friends joining me. Luckily, I had my chunk destroyer, so it was super easy to dig out the area. After clearing out the spot, I added lots of greenery for all the herbivores that were joining me, along with a sunroof to get plenty of sunlight for them. How do you guys like it? This is the best home we could ever ask for. Gerald would be proud. I hope having more of you herbivores around can bring peace to this world. But anyway, I'm gonna get some fresh air. I climbed my watchtower and gazed into the night sky. Oh no, that asteroid is getting closer. I began to feel discouraged. I hadn't gotten any closer to stopping it. I went looking for ways to stop the asteroid and Dr. Albuquerque during days 34 to 37. It's so hot out here. Wait, are those bones? Who could do such a thing? What do you think, bozo? Yeah, bozo? Actually, it's bronzo. <laughs> huh? Guess he found our boneyard. What do you guys want? We want to become the most feared predators on Earth. And we need to take you down to accomplish that. You know what? Three versus one, bring it on. The three of them pounced onto me. I defended myself pretty well for a while and got some decent hits on them. But soon, my stamina began to falter and the Raptor gang started to get the best of me. We almost got him, boys, so keep at it. Just when I thought it was over for me, Bite came to the rescue. Ah, help, help. Together, Bite and I scared off the Raptor gang. You'll regret this, Diamond Dinosaur. <laughs> Will you shut up? I had grown less suspicious of Bite and became closer as friends. Thanks, Bite. Don't mention it. But there's really not much time. We need to, I mean, you need to grow up so you can be full of more precious diamonds. Do you know a way? Mm -hmm. I followed Bite to some strange device from days 38 to 41. Whoa, Bite, where did you get all this technology from? I don't know, it was just here. It says Jumbo Beam on it, so maybe it can make it grow. Are you sure it's safe? Of course. This will ensure you grow bigger and your diamond skin also grows. Now that that's the important thing. Okay, let's give it a go. I stood in front of the device and Bite began to count down from three, three two, one. Oh man! What is it? Looks like we need a new Henos core to power it. Henos? Yeah, it's a large crystallized entity. Holds massive amounts of energy. Well then, let's get that core! As we were traveling on days 42 through 45, I became very curious about something. Hey Bite, how do you know where the Henos is? It's in my GPS. What's a GPS? Oh, uh, did I say GPS? I meant, uh, uh, oh wow, we're almost there. Uh, okay. After a bit more walking, Bite finally stopped. Here it is. We had arrived at a green crystallized pyramid, but before we could approach, we were ambushed and attacked by Eno's creatures. Bite and I sprang into action. I used my bone sword and Bite used whatever sword they had. Luckily, these bugs did not do much damage. Finally, we defeated the last one and we were ready to enter. I chowed down on some raw meat to heal up and Bite kinda looked concerned. As I was about to go inside, I realized Bite wasn't following me. Come on, Bite, we need to hurry in case more creatures come. You 
go on in. I'll watch the outside and signal if something goes wrong. Okay, buddy. Good idea. I continued inside and found the Henos in a large area. It was already looking to fight. Bring it on. You don't scare me. The Henos leapt down from its throne to attack. I slashed it with my sword as it started to punch me. I was taking good bits of its health. It then started trying to shoot me with its laser. Luckily, I was able to dodge and got enough quick blows to wear it down before it could recover. The Henos was finally defeated and I had obtained the Henos core, also known as the Time Stone. Mission complete. Time to go tell Bite. Before I could step outside, Bite ran up. I was about to tell them the good news, but he interrupted me. You got it. Hurry, let's go. Bite started to head off without me. Hey, wait up. We arrived back at the machine during days 46 to 49. Here's the Henos core. <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. Three, two, one. I got hit with an immense beam. Then I transformed into a diamond T-Rex and gained five more hearts. I feel so powerful and large now. This is amazing. You're precious. Oh, so precious. Look at all your diamonds. Thanks, Bite. Just then, the Ankylosaurus from earlier appeared charging at me. There you are. Ah! No, my ankles. I ran away, not knowing what the Ankylosaurus would do to me if they caught up. Eventually, I made it to a far place, but I ran out of breath. Ooh, why are you running away from me? I thought you were going to bite my ankles. Wait. What? No, I'm just trying to warn you of your little friend. Who, Bite? Yeah, he's not so innocent, you know. No, you're lying. I'm not. He's the cyborg's companion. Dr. Albuquerque? Yeah, that's the one. I didn't know who to trust anymore, so I went looking to Bite for answers. I went back to look for Bite on days 50 through 53. Once I arrived back at the machine, I realized they were missing. I started yelling out for them. Bite! Where are you? I need to have words with you. But instead of getting Bite's attention, I attracted the attention of another scary dino. Oh, hi, you're a friendly guy, right? The other dino roared and charged straight at me. Ah, not friendly, not friendly. I dodged the dino and quickly began fighting it with my sword. It clawed at me and tried to bite me, but my diamond coating and armor made its attack much weaker. It was still strong and was able to dodge some blows while using a ground slamming attack. But the more we fought, the more it slowed down and I was able to get more hits in. Eventually, I managed to wear it down and killed it. I didn't want to do it, but I had to. Now where's Bite? They're in so much trouble when I fight them. I headed back home to see if they were there. Instead, I was greeted by Trixie. Wow, you're even stronger now, but you look rough. Yeah, tell me about it. That awful bite betrayed me. What? Oh no. I'm sorry they did that to you, Bronzo. Well, um, if it's any help, they left this in their room. Sorry for snooping. It just caught my eye when I was walking past. Trixie dropped a book with Bite's name on it, and I started to read it. Bite Log 00101. Operation Diamonds is almost to go. The big dumb-headed diamond dino is on to me, but I think I can regain his trust. What? I can't believe I trusted them. I kept reading and found something interesting. I will return to Dome 2 in a couple of days from now. And whatever those coordinates are. These coordinates must be where the second dome is. Please don't be mad at me. I wasn't thinking when I picked it up. I just didn't want it to get stepped on. And I'm not mad at all, Trixie. In fact, you're a hero. Really? Yay! I found Bite exactly where their diary mentioned, from days 54 to 57. Bite, I can't believe you. Oh, uh, thank goodness you found me. You can't fool me anymore. I know you're working with Albuquerque. So you finally gained some brains, huh? Well, you're too late. What? What are you talking about? The asteroid hasn't hit yet. Forget about the asteroid. I'm talking about the domes. There's two out of three powered up, and once the third is up and running, all gem dinos will turn into what they're made up of. So I'll just be a pile of diamonds? Not on my watch. I ran up to bite and hit him really hard. The results were shocking. System malfunctioning. System malf... Wait a second. You're not even a real dinosaur. I'm sorry. I have to destroy you, Bite. Here goes nothing. I'll be taking that. Dr. Albuquerque took off with the broken bite. From days 58 to 61, I figured I needed a long-ranged weapon if I wanted to beat Dr. Albuquerque. Hmm, I know, the cavemen. I made my way back to the cavemen village and it seemed like they discovered fire. Booga, 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 booga. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Can one of you help me out? <gasps> What do you need? Yeah, I'm looking for a weapon, some arrows and a bow. Do you know how to make it? Mmm, oh 
Ooga Booga? No, no, no. Arrows and a bow. He then jumped up as if he got the idea and ran away. Wait. Ugh, this is pointless. Just when I was about to leave, the caveman returned. Here you go. Yes. Thank you so much. The caveman then returned to the fire. I was traveling back home in the dark on day 62 through 65 when I started to hear some familiar snickering. The raptor gang jumped out of hiding. Oh, no. Not this again. That's right, bozo. Looks like we got him this time, boys. Last I heard, he ain't with his little buddy anymore. <laughs> bite. <laughs> no more little bitey bite to help you. Leave bite out of this. I took out my bow and started shooting arrows as a warning. The raptors were extremely confused. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is that? Advanced weapons. You don't want none of this. Look, man, we don't want no troubles, actually. Are you guys serious? You better not be lying to me. No, we promise. Doc Raptor says he'll make it up to you. <laughs> oh, really? I don't believe you. He won't stop laughing. I can get you a stronger weapon. If you know where a stronger weapon is, then why did you freak out so much over my arrows? Because even though I know where the weapon is, I can't actually use it or figure it out. None of us can. Hmm. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, that's why you startled us when you started using a fancy new age weapon. Okay, deal. Dark Raptor, lead the way. Ooh -hee -hee. Oh, sick. All right, then. Let's go. The other two of you can chill at my base for now, but no eating the herbivores. From days 66 to 70, I traveled with the Dark Raptor. Where exactly are we going? Legend tells of a powerful weapon located in Pirate's Cove. Really? Then it should be easy to get it, right? Well, actually, it's guarded by a two-headed giant. Sounds like a piece of cake. Let's go. We kept traveling until we finally reached the Pirate's Cove. Don't worry, Bronzo. Whatever happens in there, I got your back. Wait, this place is called Pirate's Cove. Weren't pirates after cavemen? I don't know what you're talking about. Let's go. As we entered the cave, the giant charged at us, and the fight was on. They were really tough, and my regular attacks did little damage. As the giant was just Distracted by the Dark Raptor, I saw an opportunity and grabbed the weapon. Once I picked it up, I felt myself getting stronger. I even gained the ability to jump super high. With the new weapon, I was able to break through the giant's defenses and make giant explosions around me. With one final strike, the two-headed giant was defeated. Woohoo! That was awesome! We did it! Good work, Bronzo. You too, uh, uh, I don't think I ever asked your name. Name's Randall. Thanks, Randall. From day 71 to 74, I remembered the three domes and searched for the final one before it was too late. In the distance, I saw a beam projecting up into the sky. Oh no, it's already happening! I reached the dome, but it was already activated. It was too late! Some of the gem dinos in the world started turning into piles of gems! This isn't good! I need to stop this! I rushed in and began breaking the dome, stopping them from taking out any more gem dinos. That was a close one. All of the commotion got the attention of Dr. Albuquerque. What are you doing? You're ruining my plans. And you're killing gem dinosaurs. I can't let that stand. You've been a pain in my side for too long. It's time to finish you once and for all, Diamond Dinosaur. Suddenly, a new set of high-tech armor attached itself to Dr. Albuquerque. What the? You like my new look? I made it myself. Uh-oh, that looks powerful. Before I could think, he started shooting at me with his laser grenade. I held out for as long as I could, but he was too powerful. None of my attacks could break through his armor. I knew I was too weak to defeat him, so before I went extinct, I ran away. Leaving so soon? I don't think so. Get back here. Albuquerque began chasing after me. I was still running on days 75 through 78. Come back here, reptile! Come on! I'm almost there! I saw my base entrance and darted to it just in time. Albie rushed after, but stopped in his tracks once he got a proper look. In front of him stood all my friends waiting and watching him. Well, weren't you trying to catch me, Albie? I... I, uh... uh... What's the matter? Raptor got your tongue? <laughs> Dr. Albuquerque seemed to weigh his options before starting to think about leaving. Ha! Not so tough now, are ya? You... you won't win, Diamond Dinosaur! Albie ran off quickly, fearing for his safety. I had an idea and decided to follow him. I stayed a good distance away as I tailed him to see where he'd go. That's right, Albie. Show me the way. 
Eventually, we made it to his hideout area, and he went in without any suspicion. So this is where he's been. I should see what he's up to in there. I snuck up till I could just see him and watched cautiously. I noticed him working on something inside. Ugh, I can't tell what he's doing. Guess I'm gonna be here for a while. I got ready to bunker down and do a stakeout to get more useful intel. I waited there for hours and even days just to see what he was up to. But all he did was work on technology I just didn't understand. I got tired of it all and went to the front. But to my surprise, a robotic crocodile came out to stop me. What the heck are you? It's me, Bite. The doctor has been doing some ex experiments on me, turning me into this. Are you here to stop me, traitor? In a way, yes. I want to tell you to stop watching him before he notices you. What did he do to you, Bite? You look awful. I've been upgraded, but Albie didn't have enough skin to cover up all my spots. But now I'm stronger than a crocodile thanks to him. You shouldn't be working with him. He's evil. You're better than this. It's too late for me. I'm too far gone. Plus joining you would be illogical. I plan to be on the surviving side. You are making a mistake, Bite. No, you are. I had to start fighting Bite if I wanted to get to Albuquerque. I used my slash ability for my diamond longsword, and it seemed to be working well. But Bite was very strong and hit hard back. Luckily, my diamond skin was too much for them. You were like family to me, Bite. I loved you. If I could feel hate, I would hate you. I jumped up and struck the final blow. I'm sorry, Bite. I wish it didn't have to end like this. I started to walk away, but I paused when visions of the good times I had with Bite started to play in my head. I wondered if that was all just Dr. Albuquerque's coding, or if Bite had free will before they betrayed me. An overwhelming feeling of sadness bursted within me. <laughs> I want to believe that Bite was once my friend and had their own emotions before that evil doctor took them away. As I was mourning, an explosion happened next to me. How did you find me? Doesn't matter. You're about to be dead anyway. I was in no shape to fight, so I just ran as fast as I could, finally making it back to my base. I can't believe this is all happening. I started to make a grave for Bite, so I would never forget the good times. And once I was done, it started raining. Great. I should have known it would start raining. Now of all times. I'll miss you, Bite. I walked away, continuing to think about the good times we had. I really do hope those times were real, and not all fake emotions made by that evil man. I went back inside of the base, and the storm got worse. A bolt of lightning hit Bite's grave without me even knowing. I felt like all hope was lost during days 83 to 86. What do I do? What do I do? Hey now, relax, calm down. How can I relax? The whole world's fate is on me. Breathe deep and release. Have peace, my friend. Peace, that's it. I need to make peace with Dr. Albuquerque. The asteroid isn't gonna stop for either of us. Now you got the right idea. Yeah, when I made peace with the Raptor Gang, my life became better. That's the answer the whole time. Hey, you wouldn't happen to know how King Gerald had such a powerful roar, do you? I actually trained him to learn it, and I could teach you pretty easily. Okay. The herbivore took me outside to channel my inner roar. Take in your deepest breath and let it out with all your might. Okay, I'm gonna give it a go. I took in the deepest breath I had ever taken, and then I roared! I did it! Look at me! Now go, Bronzo! Save her! On days 87 through 90, I returned to Albuquerque's base. From outside the walls, I called out to him. Hey, Alby, you in there? You again? How stupid of you to return to this place, Diamond Dino! No, 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 please, please! I don't want to fight. I came here to propose a truce. A truce? Why would I do that? I explained to him about the asteroid and convinced him that protecting the dinosaurs now would lead to ores in his timeline. And if you won't do it for me, do it for Bite. You make a compelling case. 
Come on inside, we don't have much time left to change the future. Inside his base was filled with super advanced technology. Whoa, look at all this tech. We don't have time for a tour, come with me. He led me over to a strange looking device and began to enter commands on the console. Uh, where are we going? It's not where we're going. It's when! With a final push of a button, the time machine activated and teleported us into the future! On the other side, we arrived in a futuristic city! He explained that after the invention of time travel, two parties formed. People who want to alter the timeline, and those who want to preserve them. I take it you're an alterist. That's correct! What good is this technology if we can't use it to help ourselves? Before I could ask any more questions, a group of people began to fire laser guns at us. We quickly scrambled into a nearby alleyway and looked for cover behind some crates, which surprisingly was the best hiding spot. I could have sworn I saw them running here. We must have lost them. Keep looking. We can't stay here. It isn't safe. Let's get back to my base. From days 91 to 93, we arrived at Dr. Albuquerque's base, and it was super awesome! I need to get a hold of a weapon. A really powerful one that can break the asteroid to pieces. Okay, well, what's the problem? It's in the clutches of that preservist! So what should we do? Just then, Albi opened up a large weapon storage. Strap in! For the start of days 94 to 96, the doctor and I started going full Rambo on a bunch of zombie robots. Those undead cyborgs had no chance against us, except the fact that they outnumbered us by a lot. Where's this weapon located? We need to get to it fast. It's all the way in the Preservist HQ. You say that like I know where that is. I'm sure you'll find it. I'm sure I won't. Where the heck is it? We finally killed all the robot zombies in the area together. All right, follow me, but keep your guard up. We snuck through the area until we found the HQ, where we took out any guards we came across, until we made it to where the weapon was being held. Looks like we gotta go through that. The weapon was being guarded by a giant robot. You ready? Born ready. We charged at the robot, who had the ability to shoot dark matter. We had to dodge them just to survive, since they could spam their dark matter bullets. It felt like an uneven fight, but after all, the doctor and I were able to get the upper hand and defeat the robot. Quick, grab the weapon! I took the weapon, a staff that had many mysteries, and I felt even more powerful than ever. But as we were about to leave, alarms started ringing. Run! You don't say! We started moving as fast as we could, running through more zombie robots and more guards. But Albie and I were a dream team, just cutting through our enemies left and right. I can see the exit! We're almost there! We broke out of the HQ and continued running until we could find an escape from all the crazy monsters. We took a short rest on days 97 to 98, thinking there were no more enemies left. I think the coast is clear. I wouldn't say that just yet. We were outnumbered. The guards surrounded us in hordes. What do we do now? I don't know. I'm out of ammo. Just then, something in the crowd started killing off some of the enemies. What the? What is that? There were fewer enemies, so we took the opportunity to attack again. Keep going! Just then, the creature revealed itself. It was Bite! Bite? Together, Albi, Bite, and I finished off the enemies. We did it! But Bite, what are you doing here? I thought you were dead. <laughs> Not quite. You only knocked my power source loose, making me shut down. A bolt of lightning shocked me and powered me back up. The shock even wiped the emotions override that was installed the first time Albuquerque captured me. Emotions override? I didn't think to tell you, but uh, Bite is an AI with real emotions. I had installed an override because he was really starting to like you. It was getting in the way of the mission. So you were really wanting to be my friend. Yes. I'm sorry for anything I did to hurt you while I wasn't myself. It's okay. I forgive you. Now, let's stop that asteroid. On day 99, we arrived back in the prehistoric land. Ah, uh, back to the present. Don't you mean the past? We don't have time for this. We need to regroup before we all become fossils. We know exactly where the asteroid will be and when it's coming. I gave us some time, a gap before it all goes down. It'll be dangerous. You need to make sure you're ready. Before we could move on, I knew I had one more thing to do. So we left and headed back to my base. When I arrived, everyone freaked out when they saw Bite, thinking he was some sort of robot ghost. Calm down, everyone. Bite's alive, and he's no longer a threat to us. 
Everyone calmed down a bit and welcomed Bite back. I got everyone's attention again and explained how Dr. Albuquerque and I plan to destroy the asteroid before it hits Earth. Yeah! yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. All right, let's go! Oh, and one last thing. I need everyone to like the video if you've been enjoying it. Comment who your favorite dinosaur was and subscribe so you never miss a video. Oh, I'm gonna do that right now, cause I'm cool. Raptors are the best. <laughs> Thank you all for your help. Now, let's go blow up this rock. I'll be back. On day 100, we headed to the top of the tallest mountain to get a good view of the asteroid. All right, this is it. Are we ready, Albie? I think you're a better shot than me. So you take the weapon. Just gotta line up my shot. But before we could get a shot off, an army of zombie robots began attacking us. Oh no, they made it through into the past. We began fighting off as many as we could, but they kept surrounding us, outnumbering both of us. I used my explosive sword and my roar, and I was able to pile through, but they just kept coming and coming. I wanted Albie to use the laser, but that would be a bad idea. We only have one shot and we gotta use it on the asteroid. Finally, it seemed to be getting too much for Dr. Albuquerque and he yelled for me. I can't get a clear target. Bronzo, you have to do it. Huh? What are you doing? Let's hope this makes up for what I did. Doctor, no. Before I could stop him, Albuquerque ran into the horde of robots. With that distraction, I had enough time to aim at the asteroid. Here goes nothing. I shot the beam at the asteroid, blowing it up in a gazillion pieces. The world was saved. However, little chunks of asteroid began to go everywhere. As they pummeled into the earth, I felt my head go hazy. I transported into my next ancient form, one further back in time than any of my other ones. On day one, I spawned into prehistoric Minecraft as a baby ancient sniffer. My pack was under attack by our greatest predator, the Creeper Rex. The dinosaurs ravaged our colony with their explosive attacks and chomped into my people with their massive jaws. Ancient sniffers were dying all around me and I was defenseless to help them. I didn't think it would get worse until one of the Creeper Rexes set their sights on me. I ran for my life as the dinosaur lunged at me. However, I didn't make it far. I was quickly stopped by a dead end. There's nowhere to run. The Creeper Rex went in for the kill and I braced myself for death. Suddenly, my dad appeared and took the bite attack instead. Dad! Bronzo, run while you still can. We'll find you again, no matter what. The Creeper Rex let out a ferocious roar and I ran while I still had the chance. On day two, I was being chased by the pack of Creeper Rexes. I was only a baby, so I knew defending myself would be pointless. I had to keep running. I turned to corner and was ambushed by one of the Rexes. They bit into me, leaving me with only half a heart. I can't run blindly, I have to do something. I turned my nose to the ground and sniffed out a different path. As an ancient sniffer, I had a keen sense of smell. My nose led me to a snowy biome, but I was stopped in my tracks by a massive chasm in the ground. The creeper Rexes were closing in fast. I had nowhere else to go. Here goes nothing. I jumped into the chasm and plummeted into the white powder below. I thought the fall damage would kill me, but some powdered snow at the bottom broke my fall. I was thankful until I realized the snow was starting to make me freeze. I need to get out of this quick. How do I get out of here? The ground was completely covered in the fine snow with no spot to escape it. The cold caught up to me and soon enough, I was frozen solid in a block of ice. Everything went black. On day three million, the block of ice I was sealed in was being thawed out in a laboratory. All around me were strange scientists in lab coats. Time to begin the dissection of the test subject. Dissection? I used all of the strength I had to break free from the ice and escape from the lab table. Follow that ancient sniffer. The lights in the facility flashed red and scientists from all over began to chase me through the futuristic hallways. I tried to use my nose to find a clear path, but the world smelled crazy different now. How long was I asleep? Just then, I caught a whiff of something familiar. I decided to follow that in hopes of it being someone who could help me. I followed the smell into another room and to my shock, discovered the Creeper Rex waiting in a block of ice. Ah! 
The scientists caught up. I was cornered between them and the massive frozen creeper Rex. On days four through five, the scientists started to close in on me. Stay back! I stepped away from them, accidentally stepping on a pressure plate on the floor. Suddenly, the room shook and the ice around the creeper Rex began to thaw out. I had accidentally activated the defrosting procedure. In a matter of seconds, the predator was freed from his icy prison. Uh, hi big guy! The oversized dinosaur lunged at me with its gaping jaws. I knew I was no match for it, but I had an idea. I jumped out of the way, causing the creeper Rex to get mixed up with my scientist pursuers instead. The two of them fought each other, buying me some time to escape. Deploy the security bots. I spotted a vent inside of the room and dove inside to make my escape. As I dropped into the vents, I heard the sound of footsteps scuttling behind me. I looked back and realized I was being pursued by robotic insects. Ah! The robots were much more nimble than me. My little sniffer legs wouldn't keep me ahead for long. I thought I was going to be caught when I saw a path leading outside. Here goes nothing! I took my chances and jumped through, unsure of where I would end up. On days six and seven, I made it outside of the lab in the middle of a futuristic city. I was in the modern world. Whoa! This place has changed so much. Just then, one of the robotic insects jumped from the vent after me. They landed a heavy attack and pinned a strange device on my body. Ah, get away! I quickly hit the insect off of me with my tusks and continued running through the streets of the technological city. I took every twist and turn I could find to get the insect off of my tail. But no matter where I went, robotic security bugs were waiting around every corner. Are they tracking me? In a moment of desperation, I noticed a ladder and began to climb as fast as I could. I finally made it to a roof of a tall building, but the insects continued to follow after. It wasn't long before I was cornered at the edge of the skyscraper. The insects were closing in. I looked over the side of the building and saw a dumpster at the bottom. It's worth a shot. I jumped over the edge of the building towards the dumpster below. On days eight and nine, I landed into the dumpster, breaking my fall and ran back towards the main street of the city. I had gotten space between the robotic insects but the ground began to tremble violently. I looked behind me and discovered the scientist riding on the back of a massive mammoth. You're not getting away from me, ancient sniffer. You're going to be my strongest weapon yet. This guy's a psycho. I scurried ahead, but I was not fast enough to outspeed a stampeding mammoth. Just as I thought I would be trampled, a baby sniffer popped out of a manhole in the ground. Over here. You don't have to tell me twice. I hopped into the manhole, narrowly escaping the mammoths running overhead. On days 10 through 11, I was in the city's sewer system with a baby sniffer. Wait a minute, who are you? My name is Sunny. You look like a sniffer, but different. Just then, the two of us heard footsteps approaching. We ran behind some cover and watched as a robotic insect walked by. Those guys are bad news. Come with me. I followed behind Sunny throughout the sewer system, trying to keep a low profile. It seemed like around every corner, there were robotic insects looking for my whereabouts. Just then, one of the insects turned and nearly spotted us. Sunny and I dove into a dark area, but my ancient flowers glowed, giving us away. How do I turn these things off? Sunny quickly built a small barrier around me to conceal my glow. She was fast enough that the robotic insect continued walking by. We better keep moving. I followed behind Sunny until she took me into a mysterious pipe. On the other side was a sprawling colony full of modern day sniffers. Welcome to our Sniffer Society. Suddenly, the room trembled and down from the ceiling fell none other than the Creeper Rex. He had found us. On days 12 through 14, the Creeper Rex was terrorizing the Sniffer Society. The horrible dinosaur began sending explosives onto the modern day Sniffers. The poor creatures fell one after the other at the overwhelming power of the Rex. It was just like what happened in my prehistoric colony millions of years ago. We have to fight back. I think I can help. Quick, let's eat this. Sunny handed me a mysterious food item and we quickly scarfed it down. Suddenly, I felt my body began to transform. My legs elongated and the flowers on my back grew bigger. I was now an adult ancient sniffer with 10 hearts. 
Sunny had also grown into an adult-sized sniffer. You're going down, Creeper Rex. I charged in at the monstrous opponent, ready to defend my modern-day allies. In my new form, I unleashed powerful beams of light from my flowers that blasted into the Creeper Rex for massive damage. The Creeper Rex lobbed an explosive power from his mouth. It hurt, but not nearly as much as it did three million years ago. He attempted to beat back my advance, but I just kept coming at him with my tusks. The moss on my back began to absorb more and more power, but the Creeper Rex wasn't keen on letting me do it again. I unleashed it in a series of devastating beam attacks. The battle was close, and my health was getting low, but I managed to take out the Sniffer Predator. I'm strong enough to defeat a Rex. Suddenly, the scientist with a horde of Creeper Rexes arrived into the colony. Get him, boys! Taking on one Creeper Rex was enough of a challenge. I knew even in my adult form, I couldn't defeat a whole pack. Sunny and I ran for our lives. On days 15 through 17, Sunny and I fled the society as the Creeper Rexes pursued us. We quickly took cover and tried to wait it out, but luckily our hiding spot seemed to conceal us for now. Oh no, my people are in trouble. If only I was strong enough to save them. But you are strong enough, Bronzo. You just took down a Creeper Rex. It's not enough though. That one foe took out an entire colony of sniffers. I can't let that happen again. I know a place rich in sniffer history. Maybe we can find some clues there. Anything that might help us is worth it. Take me there. I traveled with Sunny until the two of us arrived in a jungle biome. I wasn't sure why, but I could sense that there was something linked to my history around here. I navigated through the greenery when out of nowhere, the scientist emerged. How did you find us? Did you forget about your little tracker? Take this! The scientist threw a splash potion on the ground, causing mutated prehistoric plants to sprout all around us. On days 18 through 20, Sunny and I were under attack by the mutated plants. They lunged at both of us. The bulky one pounded its chest and began to summon vines that sprouted from the ground that speared me and launched me into the air. I tried to retaliate with my tusk attacks and solar beam, but the solar power seemed to just invigorate both of them. The smaller plant creatures spewed out powdery fumes that grew huge flowers with petals sharp as blades. They bit at me and stunned me, making it difficult to move. This fight was getting to be too much. Sunny did his best to fight off his attacker while I fought off my own. The hulking vine monster slammed his fist onto me repeatedly, causing some serious damage. I fought with all of my strength, but more and more of the weeds continued to grow from the ground. I couldn't keep up. Why are you doing this? I'm turning ancient creatures into weapons, and you'll be my ultimate subject. No way, dude. I used my beam abilities to stun the scientist and buy myself more time. I looked around and spotted a tree with vines sprawling up the side. Sunny and I used this to our advantage and climbed up the treetop to gain some footing. Now what? Look! From the top of the tree, we spotted a massive temple looming in the distance. That's the ancient sniffer temple I was thinking of. Let's go. On days 21 through 23, Sunny and I finally arrived at the base of the Sniffer Temple. It towered over us, and I could feel a strange power pulling me inside. The scientists could be behind us. Stay out here and keep watch. Roger that. Sunny stayed put as I entered the mysterious temple for something to help our case. The ancient structure was full of traps, so every step I made with caution. I could not afford to get into any more trouble than I already was. Just then, an arrow flew by, startling me. Oh, what the? I stepped back and accidentally set off another trap. A volley of arrows flew towards me from the wall, and I made a run for it. I rushed into the next room until I finally reached a chamber, holding some sort of tome at the center. I could feel it power drawing me in, stronger than before. Is that the thing attracting me? I approached the artifact, only to be ambushed by a massive temple guardian. On days 24 through 26, I was confronted by the guardian of the Sniffer Temple. You may not pass. Please, I need to know about my people. You are not worthy. Intruders such as yourself will perish. The guardian didn't hesitate to attack. He charged at me, hitting me with his powerful rock arms, heavily dwindling my health. The guardian was overwhelming me. I had to get back and keep my distance in order to land my attacks. He then smashed the ground, spawning landmines around me. Unfortunately, I kept stepping on them, dealing massive damage on me. I used my yellow beam, healing me and dealing minimal damage to my opponent. To my surprise, I didn't 
didn't seem to slow him down because he was still charging at me. I fought with all my might, but it was clear that this was my toughest opponent yet. His power outmatched the strength of even the Creeper Rex. Even so, I was determined to save the modern day Sniffers and find the whereabouts of my people. I honed in all of my strength and struck down the Guardian. That's the power of ancient Sniffers! With him out of my way, I stepped forward and claimed the ancient tome for myself. Before I could see what it held inside, a massive mecha, armed by the scientist, blasted open the roof of the temple. I found you! Have a taste of my new tech! I was too exhausted from the battle to fight a massive robot. I ran away as quickly as I could. On days 27 through 29, I was being pursued by the scientist in his high-tech mecha. He launched powerful projectiles at me that blew up the forest as I tried to escape. I could tell right away that its power was immense. I don't stand a chance against that. I continued to flee, but the mecha was faster. It was gaining on me. Just then, Sunny dropped down from one of the trees in my path. Run, Bronzo! I'll distract him! What? She would not let me protest. The little sniffer stood her ground. I watched as the mecha confronted her. You may not be an ancient sniffer, but I'll take what I can get. Sunny was forced to follow the evil scientist. I couldn't let her get hurt, so I followed behind them in secret. On days 30 through 32, I followed the scientist and Sunny to a snowy base. There, all of the modern day sniffers were being held captive in cages. Join your people, you pest. The scientist locked Sunny up inside one of the cages with the other sniffer. Testing will begin shortly. I'll be back soon. I watched as the hulking robot left giving me the opening I was waiting for. I have to help them before they get hurt. I snuck through the base, making sure not to attract attention to myself. Finally, I reached the cages where Sunny was being held. I'm gonna break you guys out of here. Oh, Bronzo, it's a trap! Just then, I heard the sound of stampeding footsteps. I looked over to the horizon to see a pack of angry mammoths running straight at me. He knew I was coming. I braced myself as the horde of mammoths stormed the base. On days 33 through 35, I was fighting off the stampede of mammoth goons. They all stomped onto me with their massive feet and tried to run me down with their ivory tusks. We're both ancient creatures. We don't have to fight. Despite my pleas, the mammoths continued their onslaught. I knew at that moment that the scientists had experimented on these poor creatures. They were no longer anything more than mindless weapons. They charged at me, headbutting me with their sharp tusks, piercing right through my skin. I charged up my yellow beam so I could heal myself while trying to strike the mammoths too. I was able to damage a little bit of the herd, but they still kept charging at me like rams. I tried to manage the pack as best as I could, and I wouldn't give up that easily. Even with all the powers I had, there were too many mammoths for me to take on alone. As I was about to give in, the ancient tome I had gotten forced itself into my main hand, as if it was calling to me. Is this the key to victory? I quickly opened the book and was sent into a flashback. Ah! On days 36 to 38, I was standing back in prehistoric times. For some reason, the sky was red over my civilization. What's going on? Why am I home? As I looked around, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye and looked up. To my horror, meteors began to rain down from the sky. I started looking through the chaos as my people were getting destroyed by the meteors falling from the sky. I then spotted my mom speaking to some of my people. It is the end of times. We must seek cover if we want to protect our people and reunite with my son. Follow me. They prepped to go back into the unknown and I snapped back into reality. Once I had my full mind back, I transformed into my third form. I gained five hearts and my staff gained a new ability. I could summon a totem that had many different powers. I used my new strength to fight the mammoths. This time I was bigger and stronger than when I fought them earlier. The size in their herd did not put fear into my eyes this time. They charged at me like last time, but I kept my distance. I created a totem and it started shooting powerful flames at the herd, dealing tons of damage. The totem was very powerful and it also had the ability to shoot a beam causing the mammoths to back up and some of them died i could also use the totem to heal myself i charged up my totem beam and finished off the rest of the mammoths because they were already at critical damage and i won the battle yes i did it but wait my people were forced to flee in the past where did they go i have to find out more i then broke out the modern era sniffers and after i got all of them out of their prisons the scientist returned and he was was in this crazy mech suit. You ruined my research. You'll pay for this. 
Come forward, ancient Enderman! Suddenly, an ancient Enderman teleports in front of me. It is time to meet your doom. On days 39 through 41, I was fleeing with all of the modern day sniffers. The ancient Enderman could teleport, making it tough to lose him. We're gonna get captured at this rate. I know a secret area, come with us. Okay, anything you say. I followed the sniffers to an underground cavern. As we went deeper into the cavern, there was an ancient nether portal. What is this place? It's a passageway to another ancient sniffer site. The answer you seek will be there. Suddenly, the room started to shake and I started to hear the sound of the ancient Enderman causing trouble. I don't have a moment to waste. Thank you. I ran through the portal, leaving the sniffers behind. On days 42 to 44, I came through the portal and arrived at the nether. This place is hot. Hot! Suddenly, I got ambushed by a pack of weird alien-like monsters. Capture the rare specimen. We'll be rich. That's not going to happen. Oh yeah, it is. Kill the Pokemon thing. The horde started to charge at me and attack. Like the mammoths, my opponents were stacked in numbers. I started by summoning my totem and used its new ability that blasted my enemies back with a powerful wind. So those that got too close would be flown away. I was keeping the pack manageable, but eventually it wasn't strong enough to hold them back for much longer. And they were able to start getting closer to me. Their attacks were getting stronger as each one of them kept striking me with their bow and arrows and their swords. I needed to fight back somehow. I tried to retaliate with my beams, but they were useless. There were just too many of them. I am at a real disadvantage here. I kept trying to fight back, but eventually the horde started to overwhelm me and I blacked out. On days 45 to 47, I woke up inside of a cage at the Pygro base. What am I doing here? What happened? In front of me was the rather intimidating leader of the Pygro. He was some sort of fire lion. Nice of you to finally be awake. Only took you a few days. Who are you? I'm the leader of the Pygro pack, Leon. We're here to make lots and lots of money. And from what I'm sensing, you're worth quite a lot, Sniffer. I'm afraid I don't have any emeralds or diamonds on me. No need. We'll simply kill you and sell your body to that scientist guy. What? No, I'm not really special or anything. I'm just a funny looking bear. Even a funny looking bear can be worth a lot of diamonds, dead or alive. I'm guessing you do this a lot. I do, but most of my bounties are never caught alive. Maybe you could make an exception. <laughs> Get him, boys. Just then, the cage was surrounded by the horde. I thought I was done for. That was until the ground began suddenly shaking with immense power. What the? What now? Huh? Oh no, everyone run. The volcano, it's gonna blow. The volcano? On days 48 through 50, all of the Pygros were running for their lives, leaving me behind. I gotta get out of here. I tried to break out of the cage, but it wouldn't budge. Ah, I need to think of something fast. Suddenly, I had a brilliant idea. I sniffed around the cage, looking for a weak point. There, this place should break pretty easily. I honed in all of my power directly at that one spot. With destroying it, I was able to break free from the cage. Time to get out of here. I ran for my life and I realized everyone was running because the volcano was about to erupt. I need to take cover quickly. As I looked around for any sort of protection, I spotted a cave and ran into it. Then the volcano started to erupt. I looked around the cave and noticed it was different. This must have been the ancient sniffer cave. This is where I needed to go. I walked deeper inside to discover the answers I was looking for. On days 51 to 53, I walked into the heart of the cave to find the ancient room. It looked to have been buried beneath for centuries untouched. There in the center was another tome waiting for me. That's just what I need. I guess it's my lucky day. I ran over to it, but just like before, it wasn't gonna be easy. Another guardian came out from the lava, stopping me before I could get the tome. You will not obtain the tome. Why not? I need it more than you. You dare speak to the Guardian like that? You're foolish, ancient sniffer. 
Prepare yourself to die. We'll see about that. The Guardian was the biggest opponent I have ever faced. I started by summoning my totem and shooting my flames at him, knocking him back. He then jumped in the air, and when he landed, it made the ground tremble beneath me. I knew then that he was powerful, and this battle wasn't going to be easy. He charged and swiped at me, scratching me in the process, causing maximum damage to me. I used my yellow beam to heal back up. I then charged up my massive beam from my totem and raised it in the air when it was completely ready and sent it towards the Guardian. Thankfully, with that last blow, I won the battle. I knew I could do it. Now for the tome. I reached for the book and prepared to use it, but I was interrupted. Leon had arrived, eager to steal my treasure. Stop right there. I think I could use that more than you could. On days 54 to 56, Leon confronted me. Leave me alone, Leon. Oh, but I can't do that. You're far too valuable to let go. I can give you other treasures. What could a mutated sniffer possibly offer me while they're still alive? I can mine some diamonds for you. I'm a pretty good miner, and I get really lucky. Enough talking, you're dead. I knew I was too weak to fight due to the last battle, so I cracked open the tome in hopes of something happening. Instantly, I was transported into another flashback. I was back in prehistoric times. My people had set up camp in a desert for the cold night. I then saw my mom looking after a strange egg of an unknown species. Mom, what is that? I promise that you will get to meet Bronzo one day. Us sniffers will survive this disaster, and so will you, whatever you are. Just then, I was snapped back to reality. I grew stronger, gaining five hearts and a new razor leaf ability. What did you do? You were just sitting there. I used the tome, and now you're going down. No, I should have killed you while I had the chance. He ran at me in rage. I used all my new razor leaf ability, striking him, backing him up a little. He began charging at me. He then front flipped and clawed at me, doing extreme amounts of damage. Suddenly, he stood on his tail, clawing me again, but this time, lighting me on fire. I spawned my totem and used my wind attack, blasting him back away from me. This gave me time to power up my beam to heal myself from the damage I had already taken from him. I conjured up my fire totem power and struck him with more beams, eliminating him. What was in that egg? It must hold the secret to where my people are hiding. Suddenly, the ancient Enderman teleported in front of me and landed a heavy blow. I was knocked down to half a heart. Shoot, my tracker gave me away. On days 57 to 59, I was running from my life from the ancient Enderman. They teleported in front of me around every corner. I was not sure if I could escape him. You can run. But I'll always be one step ahead of you. I gotta use my nose. I started sniffing around and I caught a scent. I followed my nose and it led me to another portal. I did not know where it would take me, but it was the only way I would be able to escape the ancient Enderman. Here goes nothing. I jumped through and I was in some lab back in the overworld. Where am I? Suddenly, the portal vanished from behind me. Oh no, this was a trap. The ancient Enderman teleported in front of me. <laughs> I've got you. Now. On days 60 to 62, I felt the icy grip of fear as the ancient Enderman fought me. Its otherworldly fists locked onto me, swinging all around. My heart pounded in my chest, anticipating the end. But just when I thought all hope was lost, a sudden commotion disrupted the fray. A creature like none you've ever seen before, an ancient raptor-like being, leapt into the fight, its presence commanding and mysterious. They stood defiantly between myself and the Enderman. Stop right there! What the? How did you get out of your cage? I used a Nunya to get out. A Nunya? Yeah, a Nunya business. In a surprising display of strength, she unleashed a formidable attack that momentarily stunned the ancient Enderman, giving me a chance to escape. Without hesitation, I followed the raptor's lead, running side by side as I sprinted through the dark and eerie facility, adrenaline coursing through my veins, propelling me forward as I left the immediate danger behind. Okay, who are you? I'm Sandy, an ancient raptor known to protect the balance of the natural world. I sensed a great disturbance in this place and came. That's when I got 
caught by that mecha guy. He's been trying to capture everything ancient and use them for more power. Oh, he couldn't gain my power, luckily. So I just watched him and learned anything I could from him until I found the right time to escape. And what did you learn? That he's an evil, evil man. Well, I could have told you that. Why were you in that lab, though? Why come here? I was looking for help. The scientist kidnapped my baby egg when he captured me, but now that I'm out, I can't save them alone. Just then, I remembered the egg from my flashback. This could be the clue I needed. I'm in. Let's save your baby. From days 63 to 66, I followed Sandy through the winding paths and hidden trails, and we arrived at the outskirts of an old, overgrown raptor colony. My baby is at the center of the fortress. That's no good. This place is armed to the teeth. I could try to go in with my size and take them down, but what if they don't stop coming? How am I going to get inside? I'm way too big. The guards will spot me. I'll take care of that. Just hold still. She produced a small vial containing a mysterious potion and tossed it in my direction. Before I could react, the potion engulfed me and I felt my body shrinking rapidly. That'll only last for a bit, so be quick. Now miniature, I cautiously approached the fortress, the sense of danger escalating with every step. The guards patrolled the perimeter and I had to dart from shadow to shadow to avoid their watch watchful eyes. My heart pounded in my chest as I navigated through the labyrinth corridors, trying my best not to make a sound. As I reached the inner sanctum, I spotted the egg, just as I had seen it in my flashback. My mind raced, and I was certain that this was the key to unraveling the mystery of my past. Without hesitation, I grabbed the precious egg, but as I did, the fortress's alarms blared to life, piercing the silence. A horde of robot insects swarmed the area, preparing to attack me. On day six, 67 to 70, I was being attacked by the robot insects. They were shooting rockets of plasma at me, which burned my skin. My sniffer powers were nothing to the robotic beetles. Normally, I could defend myself, but I was tiny. This made me so much more vulnerable. I gotta get out of here. I ran away from the insects with my egg. I zigged and zagged around objects, trying to lose the insects, but more kept coming. Now I had to deal with flying robot bugs, whose projectiles flung me into the air. Luckily, I was so small, the fall wasn't so bad. I tried to fight back, but these robot bugs were overwhelming me with all their rockets. I couldn't catch a break, and my sniffer powers were barely doing anything to get rid of the guards. I kept running, and I narrowly escaped the fortress. Finally, freedom! I looked around to see if I could see the insects. Did I lose them? Wait, where's Sandy? Suddenly, the ancient Enderman teleported in front of me. Not this guy again! He started to attack me. There was nowhere I could run this time. I had to fight. I started by using my beam, striking the ancient Enderman, but he ran right through my attack. Then he teleported when I least expected and started hitting me with his humongous arms from behind, doing a great deal of damage. He kept teleporting and it was hard for me to keep up with him. My powers didn't seem to affect my opponent, no matter what I tried to attack him with. I'm too weak in this small state. I'm going to lose. On day 71 to 74, I was losing the battle in my tiny size. That was until I grew back into my normal size. We're even now. You're going down. The battle began and I fought with all my strength and determination, dodging the ancient Enderman's attacks and landing precise blows. It was a fierce struggle, and I could feel my body straining under the pressure. However, I refused to back down, knowing that Sandy's baby's life depended on my success. The Enderman teleported in front of me, so I used my Razor Leaf ability, slashing him back. This allowed me to keep my distance from my opponent and charged up my totem power. He tried to keep teleporting around me to throw me off. I had to time my attacks right. Once I was able to find the perfect opportunity to strike, I charged up my powerful flames and fired it at my enemy. After giving everything I had, I finally defeated the Ender Freak, their mysterious body disappearing into nothingness. Relief washed over me, but there was no time to celebrate. Sandy rushed in, her eyes filled with hope and gratitude. My baby! Oh, thank you so much! Before we could finally take in the moment, a menacing presence made itself known. The scientist, piloting a formidable mecha suit, strolled into the chamber, standing there menacingly. Ah, I see you've managed to cause some trouble, but it ends here. In an instant, the mecha suit's cannons powered up and a devastating blast was unleashed upon Sandy. And I watched as she crumbled to the ground. No! 
I'll be taking that egg back. I don't think so. You'll have to strip it from my sniffer paws if you want it. I don't think that would be a problem with this mecha. I have the power to rip trees from the ground. The difference between me and trees is that I won't just be sitting ducks. I'll be fighting back. On days 75 to 77, I was still face to face with the scientist and his mech. How could you do that? She was trying to take my precious test subject, so I eliminated her. She was this egg's mother. You monster. That doesn't matter. She was in my way. She got what she deserved. And now nobody will stand in my way to destroy you. <laughs> no, I'm going to do whatever it takes to protect this egg. And if that means standing my ground and fighting you, then so be be it. Why is it that you care so much about that egg anyways? Hmm, could it be that it holds the answers to your past? I'd sure like to get a closer look at it, if you don't mind. How about you get a closer look at my fist? My vision turned red as a blind rage consumed me. Without a second thought, I charged at the Mecca with all my might, fueled by the injustice and sorrow of Sandy's loss. I charged up my beam and blasted it at the robot. The Mecca had jet boosters on its feet, so he was able to jet backwards, evading my beam. My opponent was smart and powerful. He flew back towards me, lunging and punching me with his massive metal fists, dealing critical damage to me. With everything I had, I spawned my totem and used my flames to slow down the mecha attacks. Unfortunately, everything I did was useless. Realizing that I couldn't win this fight, I made a difficult decision. I disengaged from the battle, leaving behind the scientist. I made a run for it, with the precious egg clutching tightly in my arms. Run all you want! I'll capture you soon enough! As I fled, my focus turned to the egg, cradled in my hands. To my horror, I noticed that it was growing cold, the life within it fading. Panic surged through me as I realized that without warmth, the baby inside may not survive. Oh no, if I don't warm this up soon, I don't think the baby will make it. On days 78 to 80, I was looking for ways to heat up the egg. I was running out of time. Suddenly, ominous clouds gathered in the sky, and I sensed that rain was imminent. I can't let the egg get wet or else it'll freeze. In a hurry, I found a safe spot to take cover, shielding the precious egg from the impending rain. Just as I settled in, a familiar voice called out my name. Also is that you? I turned to see Sunny standing before me. Relief washed over me as I realized that I'm not alone in this critical moment. Sunny, I need your help. They listened intently as I explained the dire situation. The egg was cold and I needed to find a way to warm it if I wanted to save the baby inside. We'll watch it for you, but you need to find a blazing soul if you want to save it. Blazing soul? That shouldn't be too hard to get, right? Well I hate to break it to you, but the Blazing Soul is being guarded by an ancient lava lord who's been protecting it for eons, but maybe you can talk some sense into them allowing you to take the soul for a good reason? She handed me a map to the item, and with that, I left in a hurry. On days 81 to 82, I followed the map and arrived at a massive lava pit. At the center was the Blazing Soul that Sunny had told me about. Now how do I get to it? Carefully, I leapt onto the platform, trying to steady my nerves as I felt the heat rising from the molten lava below. My heart raced with every uncertain movement. In a moment of near disaster, I almost slipped, but I quickly crouched down and managed to regain my balance just in time. Whew, I better watch my step or I'm going to be a cooked sniffer. Just when I thought I was going to reach the blazing soul safely, a terrifying sight emerged from the depths of the lava pit. A monstrous being made entirely of molten lava, the Lava Lord. Stay away from my blazing soul, you lousy little sniffer. Well, I need it to save an ancient dinosaur. What could you possibly need it for? An ancient dinosaur, you say? What business have you with the relics of Eon's past? My blazing soul holds the essence of the fiery earth itself, a power that should not be trifled with. The clash began as I engaged the Lava Lord with my agility and speed being my only advantage against its sheer strength and fiery attacks. With every strike, the ground trembled and the scorching heat intensified. The battle was fierce and every move was critical to avoid the lethal touch of the lava creature. He charged at me, getting in close, overwhelming me. I tried to keep my distance, but with his massive size and lava surrounding us, it nearly seemed impossible. As I tried running away from him, he smashed the ground, sending waves of lava through, burning beneath my feet. I had to fight back with everything I had. 
I spawned my totem, charging up my powerful yellow beam, and sent it toward the lava goon with all my strengths. To my surprise, it surrounded my opponent, dealt massive damage, and eventually eliminated him. With the Lava Lord vanquished, I claimed the Blazing Soul that Sunny spoke of, feeling the powerful energy it radiated in my hands. Time was of the essence, and I wasted none as I swiftly made my way back across the platforms. I returned back to the Sniffer Colony, where they were watching over the egg. I walked up to the egg, and I hurried and used the Blazing Soul to warm up the egg. All of a sudden, it began to hatch, and a little baby ancient dinosaur came out. Aw, hi little guy. Daddy? I sniffed it, and suddenly I was sent into a flashback. I saw a vision. My people were in a snowy village full of owl sheep. I walked through the village to see all of them peacefully together. As I was walking, I saw my mom speaking to the elderly owl sheep. Please, these times have been harsh. I'm not sure if my people are going to survive. I know your pack is strong, but very well. I will show you how your people can live through this disaster. The Owl Sheep Colony are your friend and allies. Thank you. We owe you our lives. You owe us nothing. We must stick together if we want to survive against the Creeper Rexes. Survival for all peaceful creatures is the main priority. You're right. So... How do you plan to keep our species alive? I have an idea! Just then, I snapped back to reality and started to feel different. I got five more hearts. I felt even stronger than before. My people met with the owl sheep? I need to find their civilization. Maybe they can help me. On days 85 to 86, I searched the snowy areas for the owl sheep civilization from my flashback. Realizing that my keen sense of smell might help, I decided to rely on my nose. I took in deep breaths of the frigid air and sniffed, following the trail of an ancient scent that seemed oddly familiar. The scent led me down a path, and with each step, I felt a connection to the distant memories of my flashback, growing stronger. What's down here? Driven by curiosity, I began to dig at the spot where the scent is most potent. The snow gave way beneath my paws, and I suddenly found myself trembling into a hidden passageway. My heart raced with excitement and apprehension as I landed inside. The room was filled with ancient scrolls and mysterious artifacts. Did this place belong to the owl sheep? As I wandered through the rows of books, I accidentally stepped on a pressure plate, hidden in the floor. In an instant, the silence of the library was broken as hidden mechanisms triggered and bone spiders materialized, seemingly out of nowhere, surrounding me. Intruder, get him! On days 87 to 88, I was fighting the bone spiders, hoping not to die and risk it all. With newfound determination and with my heart filled with the weight of the ancient civilization's legacy, I unleashed my powers upon the bone spiders. My attacks were more precise and I wielded the energy coursing through me with skill and finesse. Bright flashes of light filled the library as I fended off the swarming enemies. Each strike pushed me to my limits. However, the sheer numbers of the bone spiders were overwhelming. They closed in on me, and I found myself cornered in another room. My back against a wall, I refused to back down, though fear gripped my heart. But I couldn't afford to falter. I took a deep breath, drawing strength from within, and continued to fight back, blow after blow. I pushed myself beyond my limits, refusing to give in to despair. Each attack became more ferocious, as if the power of the Owl Sheep civilization coursed through me. Finally, with a burst of determination, I defeated the last of the bone spiders. My breath was ragged, my body weary, but I stood triumphant amidst the defeated enemies. But in my haste to be cautious, I took a step back and accidentally stepped on another pressure plate. Whoops! To my surprise, a secret door opened up instead. I cautiously peered inside, curiosity overcoming my fear. What's through here? I better check it out. I walked into the secret room to find a map waiting in the center. I walked to it and picked it up. The map was titled Owl Sheep Civilization. This is just what I needed. Suddenly, the room began to tremble. The pedestal was booby-trapped. This place is gonna blow! I gotta get out of here! I ran through the halls of the library, trying to find a way out. During the process, I accidentally stepped on another pressure plate, and it summoned more bony spider freaks. They started to attack me, and I fought them off. They all kept shooting their webs at me, slowing me down. I put up my totem and powered up my yellow beam, blasting some of them off the ledge. But more and more kept coming. I don't have time for this! 
I spotted a hallway to a cave and followed it back to the surface. I followed the map to find a colony. It was the same from my flashback, but different. To my horror, the scientists had already messed with the site. There was a massive machine, craters everywhere, and the last living owl sheep was trapped in a cage. What's going on here? Suddenly, I heard the scientists' men talking, so I started to listen to them. Is the mission nearly complete? Yes, sir. Just a few more calibrations and it will be finished. Excellent. Once it is done, we will power it on and use it to weaponize the ancient animal. This stupid thing? What kind of power could it hold? No idea, but the boss needs it. Well, he pays me, so I ain't gonna argue about some dumb flightless bird thing. Oh no, I have to break that machine before that happens. I went stealthily around the base to try to get to the machine. Also, to not get caught by the scientists' guards. After going through the entire destroyed village, I had finally reached the massive machine. Wow, being right next to it, it's much bigger than I thought. Suddenly, one of the guards ambushed me. Not so fast. How did you find me? He still has that tracking device on him. Get him. A large squall golem charged at me to attack. On days 93 to 94, I was fighting the golem, but it was relentless with its attacks. The golem charged at me super fast, ready for battle. He raised his arms up and then came down with maximum force on my head, doing a great deal of damage. It was hard to land my attacks because of how close he was getting to me, but I had to try. I used my powerful beams, leaving flames surrounding the golem. Unfortunately, that didn't seem to affect him at all. He was too fast and agile. It was too hard to keep up. I had to come up with something quick. Wait a minute, I have an idea. Taking a risk, I positioned myself in front of the machinery and called out to the golem, taunting it to come closer. Hey, big guy, come and get me. At the last moment, I leapt out of the way, dodging its attack. In an unfortunate twist of fate, the golem accidentally collided with the machine. The machine began to malfunction and the golem was caught in the chaos. No, my golem, what have you done? With the machine's destruction distracting the guards, I rushed to the cage holding the owl sheep. Time to get you out of here. Channeling all my strength, I broke open the cage. We then fled the scene together. On days 95 to 96, I fled to a safer spot with the owl sheep leader, away from the colony. We took a few moments to catch our breath, relieved that we managed to avoid immediate danger. No one had followed us, so we were finally safe to talk. Thank you for saving me from the scientist's cage. I must admit, I didn't expect to see an ancient sniffer around here. That's actually why I was looking for you. With a mix of excitement and urgency, I explained my quest to find my people and the ancient civilization that has become intertwined with my own fate. I told him about all the clues I've discovered so far and how they have led me to him. I remember your civilization fondly. They were a kind group of creatures and I helped them. I assure you, they're still alive. They are? Please, tell me, where can I find them? Rather than telling you, I think it would be easier if I showed you instead. Here, take this. The owl sheep leader handed me a strange artifact. I felt a magical power emanating from it. And as soon as I reached out and touched it, I was engulfed in a brilliant light. In an instant, I found myself transported into another flashback, one that held the key to unlocking the mystery of my people's whereabouts. On days 97 to 98, I was in a prehistoric flashback. I found myself surrounded by glittering ice, standing with my people, led by the wise and noble Owl Sheep leader. His words hold the promise of survival, but doubt lingered in my mother's voice. This is the Owl Sheep Cave. It is cold enough to preserve your bodies for a millennia. If you wish to survive, this is the way of doing so. Are you sure it's safe? Absolutely. How will I know if you're not just setting us up for the future? Then I would be a great trickster if that were the case. Besides, we cannot be worried about what lies ahead of our time. All we can be sure of is what is right in front of us. Okay, one more thing. Will it hurt to be frozen? I'm sensitive to pain. Not at all, especially with that thick sniffer fur. Think of it like going to sleep peacefully. You won't even know what happened. Then we'll do it anything to see Bronzo again. With hope in their hearts, they followed the owl sheep leader deeper into the cave, seeking a way to ensure their survival for a millennia. As time passed, they became frozen in the ice, their bodies preserved as the owl sheep leader had promised. 
Suddenly, the flashback ended, and I went back into reality, realizing that they are indeed in the Owl Sheep Cave, but their safety was uncertain. The thought of them being at the mercy of the scientist filled me with anxiety and determination to protect them. They're in the Owl Sheep Cave! That's right, but I suspect the scientist is already after them. Take this and make haste. With a firm nod of understanding, I set off immediately, determined to reach the Owl Sheep Cave and rescue my people from whatever danger they may face. On day 99, I arrived at the location marked on the map and found the entrance to the Owl Sheep Cave. My heart raced as I entered, hoping that I'm not too late to save my people. Inside the cave, I was met with a chilling sight. The ancient sniffers were frozen solid, their once vibrant and lively forms now encased in ice. Fear gripped my heart, but I refused to give in. With urgency, I rushed to them, using all of my strength and my newfound powers from the library to break them out of their icy prism. One by one, I released them from their frozen state, hoping that I could revive them. Ugh, my head. Bronzo? Am I dreaming? No, Mom. It's really me! Oh, son, the All Sheep Leader was right! You're safe! They were right about you being safe, too! I can't believe you froze yourself just to save our people! I did it so I could see you again, Bronzo. You're my son, and I missed you. I love you! I love you too, Mom. However, the reunion was short-lived as the room suddenly shook, signaling the arrival of the scientist in his menacing mecha suit. Looks like I hit the jackpot! On day 100, I was confronted by the scientist. How did you find this place? You led me here, you ignorant sniffer! Oh no, I forgot! The tracking device! That's right, and now I have a whole colony of ancient sniffers to do my bidding! Leave them alone! It's really me that you're looking for! You're correct! They mean nothing! You are the strongest ancient sniffer, and I will gain your power one way or another! Over my dead body! That's the idea! Everyone, get out! My mom took all the ancient sniffers outside the cave. I was left to face the scientist head on, engaging in a fierce battle. He was a formidable opponent, using his scientific prowess to augment his abilities, and countered my every move. The fight was intense, and with every strike, I felt the weight of my responsibility to protect those I cared about and the ancient civilization that has become intertwined with my own fate. I knew this battle wasn't going to be easy, but I was determined to defeat the scientist once and for all. He charged at me and punched me hard enough, sending me backwards. I charged up my beam, blasting at him, healing me from the damage I took from his ferocious punches. In the process, my beam dwindled his health a little. To my surprise, he started shooting precise missiles at me, causing my skin to burn on impact. I decided to fight fire with fire and summoned my totem and striked him with my flames. But with his metal core, it didn't have an effect on him. Suddenly, I felt power within myself from the sniffer and owl sheep civilization. With one final move, I summoned all my remaining energy and delivered a decisive blow that left the scientist defeated. Yes! Just then, my mind drifted once more, sending me back into another body as an egg. On day one, I hatched in as a baby Tyrannosaurus Rex. Whoa, I'm a little lizard and I have 10 hearts. Nice. It was so cool being a dinosaur, but I felt strange. Wait, where is my family? Am I all alone? All of a sudden, a herd of Triceratops started a stampede right where I was standing. Ah, ah, gotta get out of here. Oh no, they're running over the other eggs. Just then, a large T-Rex came out and started fighting the Triceratops. Bronzo, get out of here. I'll hold them off. That must have been my mother. So I did as she said and ran away, eventually finding a clearing in the woods. I should be safe here. Just then, I was attacked by a bunch of orangutans. Oh no, apes are trying to kill me. Gotta get out of here. I punched a few of the orangutans, giving me enough time to escape. Oh, I can hide in this cave for the night. I finally found protection from this prehistoric world. Man, being a dinosaur is scary. On day two, I returned back to my nest and I found my mom there. Hey mom, I'm kind of hungry. Got any food? Here, take this. It's not much for a growing dino, but it's something. My mom gave me some theropod meat, but even after eating it, I was still hungry. Um, mom, I think I need more food. Come little one, I'll show you how to hunt. Mother quickly pounced on a dryosaurus and ripped its head apart. She said it was the circle of life. 
Now you try for yourself. I'll give it my best. I used my speed to my advantage and ripped the Dryosaurus to shreds and got some of its meat. Yeah, I did it. I kind of feel bad though. I wasn't satisfied with primitive life, so I decided to chop down a small tree and make a crafting table, wooden tools, and a campfire. These will do just fine for now. I decided to cook the meat I hunted earlier and ate it. I suddenly grew into an adolescent T-Rex. Whoa, look at me grow. This is awesome. After a long day, I went back to the nest and slept next to my mom. On day three, I was attacked in my sleep by an Ankylosaurus. Ah, ah, what the heck? Get away from me. I tried to fight back, but I needed mom's help. But when I looked for her, she was gone. Mom, where are you? Although my mother was gone, I had to defend the nest. And so I did with my wooden sword. Ha ha, and stay dead. This place isn't safe anymore. I didn't want to get attacked in my sleep again. So I decided to build a home. I used the wood from earlier to build a huge structure that I could grow into. One day, I'll be as big as your mom. Mom. I mean, my mom. <laughs> These tall ceilings should do. Speaking of mom, I went on to search for her. While I was searching for my mom, I was met by a Dakota Raptor who warned me to hide. Hey you, the primates are coming. You best get out of here. They will rip your face off. The what? The who? Run! I was so confused, but I knew that this was a dangerous world. So I hid in a cave for the time being. For days four through five, I mined stone and coal while I was inside the cave. All these materials should come in handy. I crafted torches, furnaces, and even stone tools. I should go check the surface now. When I got to the outside, I ran into a big, scary dinosaur. Ah, please don't eat me. <laughs> I, I won't. Trust me. I'm a Camarasaurus. Vegetarian? Oh, thank goodness. Do you know anything about the primates who came last night? Uh, yeah. Lately, the monkeys have become quite violent towards us dinosaurs. Okay, thank you for the information. I'll keep an eye out. I was starting to wonder if the monkeys had anything to do with my mom's disappearance. I'll find you, mom. I promise. When I got back to my home, I noticed it was destroyed by something or someone. What the heck? Who would do such a thing? There was no time to waste. I had to find mom and make a new place to call home. On days six to eight, I searched the lands and found a clearing. It was a perfect spot to build my new base. This should do. Now I just need some wood. I began chopping down all kinds of trees, so I had a variety of wood to work with. This is gonna look so nice when it all comes together. When I began building, I took into consideration the size I would be when I'm fully grown, so I made sure the ceilings were really high. By the time I'm done, three of me could fit in here. I decorated the empty base with torches, chests, and some moss so I could have a place to sleep. This looks so good. I began working on a pin for future livestock that I might bring in later. All done for now. Huh, what's that noise? I heard some monkey screeches and a small reptile pleading for help. So I decided to take a stand and do something about all this monkey business. Roar! Get out of here! You no good climbing fiends! Hey, are you okay? When I tried to talk to the island on, it ran away. Aw, I hope I didn't scare it off. I went to bed, sad because it seemed like the world saw me as some big scary predator. For days nine and 10, I woke up to the island on snooping around my base, looking into my chests. Hey, what are you doing? I felt like I should give this island on something to eat, just like how my mom gave me food. We shared a nice moment together, but it was interrupted by a monkey howling in the distance. What was that? We should check it out. We found a group of bonobos that were swarming outside of my base. And behind them all, sitting menacingly, was a gigantopithecus. Stay off of my domain. I started killing some of the bonobos. I was able to take down quite a few of them before the gigantopithecus screamed at me. Retreat, my friends, but we will be back, and with greater numbers. The apes left, and it was just me and my new friend. The island Don thanked me for killing all the primates. She has never seen anyone stand up to them like that. Well, I'm not gonna let us be bullied by a bunch of stupid mammals. Hey, island Don is a bit much to say all the time, and I don't even think I'm pronouncing it right. Do you mind if I call you Ellie? On day 11, I had the craziest dream. I saw the Gigantopithecus in a treehouse. Who the heck are you? I'm King George, but never mind that. There is a mass extinction coming soon, but your reptile brains are too stupid to listen. Well, technically dinosaurs are more closely related to birds than reptiles. 
Who cares? This is what I mean. You're more focused on the little things and don't see the greater picture. Wow, you're so mean. Ah, what's it matter anyway? You dinosaurs are going to die out anyways. Plus, you're all a waste of resources. Resources that could be used by my monkey army to build their underground bunkers so that they may secure their future. Is that the reason all monkeys have been attacking dinosaurs? Yes. Therefore, all dinosaurs must die before it's too late for the monkey society. I swear, with all of my dino might, I'll put an end to you and your army. Suddenly, I snapped back to reality. I knew I had to hurry and rally up the dinos so that we could stop King George and his monkey army. For days 12 through 14, Ellie and I set out to search for my mom. She shouldn't have gotten too far, and I bet she's also looking for me. But while we were traveling, we ran into a bunch of monkeys. Oh no, Japanese macaques. I don't know. Japan doesn't even exist yet. We took this as an opportunity to get some food, but after we killed a few of them, we saw that they didn't drop any meat. Ugh, we gotta find some food soon, Ellie. I'm starving. We found a river nearby and hunted some prehistoric fish. This should be a great meal. We then set up some campfires and cooked the fish, and they were scrumptious. While we were in the area, we stumbled upon a sandstone fossil. Huh, I should keep this. It might come in handy later. Ellie then asked me if I think the fossil is from a reptile or a primate. I don't know how much it matters. If King George is right, we'll all end up like this fossil. But he's probably wrong, right? Yeah, a mass extinction would be crazy. Through days 15 to 17, Ellie and I searched for mom some more. We traveled through a desert wasteland. It was so much different than my home. Whoa, look at all this sand, Ellie. I ran into some other dinos along the way and asked them to come join us at the base so we could band up against these monkeys. I'll be needing every single one of you. Follow me, guys. Along the way, we even found some sheep. Oddly enough, sheep still look the same. All right, sheep, come with me to a better place. I put all the Descalosauruses into the pen I made earlier. I gotta eat somehow. I figured this was less primitive than hunting for food. Now that looks delicious. Ellie and I built another pin for the sheep. She's a great builder. Enjoy your new stay here, sheep. As for the other dino friends, I built an extra room, making sure the interior was big enough for them to be comfortable. For days 18 to 21, I went searching for clues about where my mom might be. While I was out, Ellie stayed behind and helped the new residents get settled in. All right, I'm gonna find you, mom. If it's the last thing I do, I eventually made it to the desert and found a Morrison hut for shelter. But there was a group of bush babies being bullied by some gelata monkeys. I know I should avoid them, but my instincts are kicking in. I had to intervene. I started chasing the evil monkeys away. Thank you for saving us. We are eternally grateful. Eh, don't mention it. They then proceeded to tell me that the group of monkeys was King George's most deadly squad of goons, and they were tasked with taking out the biggest carnivorous dinosaurs. Those monkeys might have been the ones who killed my mom. I didn't know this for sure, but I was starting to lose hope. Do you mind if we stay with you for the night? The bush babies told me that they always flee from other monkeys now, since they have become violent as of late. You're so strong, and we can't defend ourselves. I will protect you. Let's take y'all back to my base, your new home. They were so grateful for my help. Plus, how could I say no to those big innocent eyes? All right, let's get going. On days 22 to 25, I returned home with some of the bush babies, but the other dinos weren't happy with me bringing home primates. What's with the faces, guys? These bush babies were refugees from King George, just like the rest of us. So be nice. I built a small tree house for the bush babies, and they loved it. Thank you, Bronzo. No problem, little guys. Enjoy your stay. I was then approached by a baby Didelphodon. It looked in dire need of help. Oh, that's horrible. But what makes you think I could save them? I'm just a regular old dinosaur. I am brave. Okay, I'll do it then. For the meanwhile, rest at the base while I track the lemurs down. The map was dropped by one of the kidnapping lemurs, so I had to follow it. From days 26 through 30, I traveled through all sorts of different biomes. Even though I was traveling for so long, I was still following the map. After a while, it was nighttime, and I was attacked 
by zombie apes. Ah! Undead ape? This must be a nightmare. I was scared, but then I remembered how brave my mom was, and I decided right there to be braver. You want some? Come get some. Hiya! I defeated all the zombie apes and continued following the map. Then I found the monkey base. What the heck? Are these dino bones? This is sick. This is awful. I had found the diadelphodon's parents, but there were ring-tailed lemurs loitering around. I had to be cautious. All right, here goes nothing. As I began breaking them out, the lemurs noticed me and started attacking. I won't let you guys stop me. Eat this, you want to be raccoons. After this, you won't be moving it, moving it. It wasn't long before I defeated all the lemurs and I met up with the diadelphodons. Follow me to the sanctuary. When I arrived back at the base for days 31 to 35, it was destroyed and everyone was gone. I was sabotaged by the bush babies. Ah, I thought I could trust them. I stormed off to speak to the bush babies about why they would do such a thing. <laughs> I was so upset, I decided the bush babies had to pay with death. Fear my dino wrath. I ate all the bush babies and decided from this day onward, all monkeys were evil. Trust no apes. I was so angry, but then I was approached by the baby Didelphodon, who calmed me down with words of hope. I guess I didn't see it like that. Thanks, little guy. The Didelphodon family ran off together into the woods. Maybe not all hope was lost. Bye. Stay safe. On days 36 through 39, I started off by killing some Vesquilosauruses. Sorry, guys. I need your meat to survive. Well, this is awkward. I then took their meat back home and cooked it and gave some to Ellie. If more people subscribe to the channel. Right now, only 21% of my viewers are actually subscribed. We make these videos for our viewers, so we never want them to ever miss any of them. Yeah, they should turn on the notifications. After finishing all the meat, I grew up again. Whoa, look at me. I'm so much bigger now. And I have 20 hearts. I'm unstoppable. Though the celebration didn't last long when the base was attacked by baboons. I can take these tiny monkeys. Now that I was bigger, I was able to take them all out with ease. But a few of them dropped dinosaur bones. Disgusting. They must have gotten these hides and horns from previous kills. I decided that my fallen brethren needed to be honored, but I didn't know how to properly do that yet. So I just kept the remaining in a chest for now and ended up burying it as well. Time to get back to work. I then spent the rest of the day mining iron to make a full armor set and iron tools. On days 40 through 43, things began getting serious. It was clear King George was not messing around with this war. Ellie and I started searching for another monkey base, hopefully one that has the Galades I suspect killed mom. As we journeyed through the woods, we found a ruin of a hut. This looks interesting. I wonder what's inside. I looked through some of the chest and found a book that contained an order from King George to mine Hennostone and return it to the monkey base. Hennostone. This must be some sort of special stone. I was interrupted by some baboons who had returned back to their hut. Ellie, take cover. I got this. I killed all but one baboon and forced it to tell me where the main monkey base was. Where is it? Where's the monkey base? Or I'll end you here. <laughs> it's, it's north of here. Please don't kill me. When it died, it dropped a few Tyrannosaur teeth. These must have been from previous kills. I took the teeth and went forth with Ellie to find the monkey base. For days 44 to 49, Ellie and I reached the outskirts of the main monkey base. Quick, let's hide in that cave to avoid being seen. I could tell we were seriously outnumbered here. There were tons of different kinds of monkeys everywhere. Maybe there is a secret entrance in this cave. We wandered around and then came across some cave sentinels who were not friendly. We gotta fight them off. These bugs were no joke and really fought hard, but Ellie and I's teamwork was enough to get rid of them. <sighs> Glad that's over. Hey, what's that? Coming out from another part of the entrance was a mandrill. Prepare to die. I started to attack the mandrill, but he immediately began to beg for mercy. I felt bad, so I decided to hear him out. Please don't hurt me, whippersnapper. I'm the seer. The seer? I'm the one who informed the Gigantopithecus of the incoming meteor. The seer explained that instead of trying to help all life survive the impact, 
King George used that information as an excuse to become violent towards dinosaurs. You're kind of freaking me out, man. Maybe there's some truth to this whole apocalypse thing. Of course there is, dummy. I saw it, duh. The mandrel explained that King George invented land and cave sentinels to guard their apocalypse bunkers from dinosaurs and other species. If Gigantopithecus's plan works, monkeys will be the only survivors and rule the world. Oh no, this is way, way, way worse than I thought. I needed to earn back the dinosaur's trust and rally against King George. Thank you for your help. I promise I'll come back and save you once I have backup. No, please don't go. No. I left the mandrill and started the journey back to the base. From days 50 to 53, I traveled back home and warned all the dinosaurs about what the mandrill told me. Hey, all you dinos, won't you listen to me? There is a meteor coming directly to us, and if we don't do something about it, we will all die. Yeah, right. Who told you that? A monkey? Well, yeah, but still, it's true. You're so gullible. Get lost. I even showed them a note from King George, but it still didn't convince them. Come on, guys, this is literal proof. Monkeys would lie for anything. We don't believe it. I thought all hope was lost, but a few other dinosaurs were not willing to risk their lives if the mandrill's prophecy was to be true. Well, believe me, it's true. Let's go to a safer place. I led them back to the base, and I soon came to realize that this was a pitiful army. I had to convince more dinosaurs to join me. There must be another way. Just then, Ellie came up to me with some great advice. That's a wonderful idea, Ellie. Thanks for your help. There was just one problem. I felt I was not ready to go back to the monkey base, but Ellie had a point. There are just a few things I need before going back. I had to upgrade my arsenal. Hey, do any of you know how to make cool prehistoric armor? One of the new recruits gave me a recipe for Thyreophorin's armor. Thanks a lot, friend. I used the teeth and hide I acquired from earlier to craft my new items. These should do me well in battle. Before leaving the base, I left Ellie in charge. Scream really loud if something happens okay? On days 54 through 58, I decided to search for someone who was as big and tough as my mom was. As I was traveling through the desert, I came across a Stegosaurus. Uh, excuse me, sir. I'm looking for the strongest dinosaur of them all. Oh, are you now? The Stegosaurus told me that there's a distant community of Tyrannosauruses in the desert, hiding from the monkey's attacks by leaving their home. Maybe my mom's there. I made a beeline towards the hideout, but on the way, I was attacked Ow! by some zombie apes. Get out of my way. I need to find my mom. I was so determined, the apes could barely slow me down. I killed all of them and continued my mission. As I arrived at the colony, I was approached by a T-Rex who was happy to see me. Hey there, little nephew. Long time no see there, bud. Wait, you're my uncle? Do you know where my mom is? Sadly, I fear I do not, bud. My uncle explained that my mom refused to join the colony because she wanted to raise me in my native habitat, not some hot and uncomfortable desert. That's a bummer. Well, I guess I should probably be heading home then. How's about you stay the night? We're family after all. This is your home. And if you'd like, we could do some training tomorrow. I could show you some sweet moves. That would be awesome. I spent the night with my uncle at the colony, excited to train in the morning. On days 59 through 62, I trained with my uncle T-Rex. We sparred with a club-tailed stegosaurus, killed some super fast dinosaurs, and snuck up on these flighty birds. I was able to pick up loot with my tiny arms. At the end of the night, I created a campfire for us to share. I even showed him how to craft it. My uncle was so amazed. See, it's pretty simple, actually. Oh, you're as smart as a monkey, Bronzo, don't you know? We ended up cooking a lot of theropod meat, and I told my uncle that mom was probably killed by monkeys. I hate to agree, but I think you're right, Bronzo. In any case, we need some of the best weapons to avenge her, yeah? Where would I get said weapons, Uncle? Go to the Sarasukas in the forest in the north. Their weapons are much more advanced over there. Thank you, Uncle. I'll be going now. On days 63 through 66, I noticed my sword was getting weak, so I used the remaining Tyrannosaurus tooths to make a sword. Whoa, this is awesome. It's a Tyrannosaurus sword. I finally approached the forest from the clearing I was in. Hmm, I better be careful. Monkeys might be here. I spoke too soon because just then I was attacked by snub-nosed monkeys. Hey, back off. Take this. Luckily, I had my Tyrannosaurus sword and armor to protect me despite my thick skin. You won't win this fight. I promise promise that. 
Just then, the first meteor fell from the sky. No, 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 it's too soon for this. All the monkeys scurried away, but I was left standing there, awestruck. The mandrill seer was right. Is this the end? Right when I thought it was over, the single meteor struck just a few feet away from me, tearing up the ground instantly. That was a close one. I investigated the wreckage and found a raw metalite drop. I wonder if this could help me with the war against the primates. I'll take it just to be sure. I continued on my journey to find the Sarasuchus. On days 67 to 70, I found the Sarasuchuses and told them that the T-Rex clan sent me. Well, in that case, welcome Bronzo. How can we help you? I need a weapon. My uncle told me you guys are the best craftsmen around. Of course, follow me. I followed the Sarasuchus, excited to see what powerful new weapons they had. But then we came upon a field littered with meteor craters. My fear had been confirmed. The meteor apocalypse was coming. I knew if I didn't do something soon, the whole world could be destroyed. I need to stop this. Do you have anything that could help me? Of course. Take a look at this. They showed me a recipe book. Apparently, they were able to use the materials from the meteors to craft crazy rare weapons and armor. Next, they took me to the armory, which looked like it was just a chest, but it was full of rare titanium, omega, ice knight, and fire knight armor. I picked up some leggings and boots and completed my armor set. I knew I could convince the other dinosaurs that the meteor apocalypse was coming. I mean, how could they deny it when I'm literally covered in meteor metal? Thank you for everything you've given me. The Sarasuchus told me that they were still working on their deadliest axe yet, but it had run out of pieces of metalite needed to finish it. Well, today's your lucky day. I happen to have some right here. I gave them my raw metalite. Without wasting time, they then smelted it into ingots, and I crafted the axe and a pickaxe. Wow, this is awesome. Thanks. With the Sarasuchus on my side, I knew we'd be unstoppable. So I told them to begin packing their things. We'd be heading back to my base first thing in the morning. From days 71 through 74, I was traveling with my new recruits when we suddenly came across a band of Hamadreas attacking some Dakota Raptors. I gotta help them. I rushed in to defend them. My new armor and sword worked wonders and I was able to defeat the Hamadreas. I told the Dakota Raptors about our cause and asked if they wanted to join us, to which they eagerly agreed. When we arrived back at the base, I saw Ellie freaking out. Hey, is everything all right? They'll pay for this. Now is the perfect time to capture one of the Sentinels. Ellie and I were able to destroy most of them and were able to trap one of them in a fence. While fighting the Sentinels, we realized they dropped Hennostone when killed. Finally, the last piece of evidence I needed to prove to the other dinos that King George has to be defeated so we can seek shelter in the bunkers. It would be a tough battle, but I'll definitely need more recruits. Though before that, I'll need to get a good night's sleep. From days 75 to 78, I headed out to find more dinos to recruit for our army. I met a group of Ischi Galastias. To convince them, I showed my metalite axe, the book with King George's orders, and the Heno Stones. Some of them were still not convinced, so I took them back to my base and showed them the land sentinel we captured. After seeing all the evidence, they agreed to join us. Welcome to the team. I continued to go out and find other dinosaurs, bringing them back to our base. With all the new recruits, our base was starting to get a little crowded, so I decided to build some new barracks. I then noticed that some of the dinosaurs were attacking each other. Hey, knock that out! They're friends, not food! I tried to convince everyone to get along, but I understood the struggle of being a carnivore. I knew I would need to get some meat for this army, as well as some plants for the herbivores too. For days 79 through 84, Ellie and I gathered some buckets, and we searched for something to hunt. Something that wasn't a dinosaur. We traveled all around, and all we could find was dinosaurs. This is not a good start, Ellie. After a while, we found a group of celebs monkeys. They were the perfect prey to hunt. Get them, Ali! Hiya! We killed them all, but it turned out they didn't drop any meat. Looks like we gotta find something else to eat. Great idea, Ellie. I'm so glad you're my friend. You're so smart. We found a stream and there were so many fish. We even caught a few in buckets so we could make a food farm at home and feed the entire army. We have enough for days here. Let's start heading back home. On the way back, we gathered some Cytophyllum for the vegetarian dinos to eat. It was days 85 through 89 and we finally arrived back home. I'm back everyone and I brought some food. I released the buckets of prehistoric fish into the river nearby. Now that's a nice fish 
farm. I also started planting some of the plants and gave it to some of the dinos. They loved it. More where that came from, guys. This is all starting to come together. Something crazy happened when I ate the prehistoric fish. I transformed into a giant adult Tyrannosaurus. Wow, look how big and scary I look now. And I have 30 hearts. Just as I was celebrating, some dinosaur ran up and told me there was an emergency. A new Hennostone creature was wreaking havoc in the forest and was heading this way. Not good. I better stop it before it makes its way to the base. I traveled through the forest from days 90 to 93, and in the distance, I saw an Ankylosaurus being attacked by the Hennos. This must be the creature I was warned about. Without wasting a second, I jumped into battle, but the Ankylosaurus was killed before I was able to defeat the Hennos. No, you'll pay for that. I noticed the laser attacks the Hennos used and how much more health it had than the land and cave sentinels. You're tough, but I'm tougher. When I killed the Hennos, it dropped a space gem. Huh, I wonder what this does. The gem gave me a speed two enchantment and now it was ready to take on King George. He won't see me coming with these upgrades. I returned to the base to check up on the progress. I should be able to get back super fast now. When I returned, I was surprised. The new inhabitants laid eggs while I was gone. This this is a wonderful new baby dinosaur that'll soon hatch. I told all the inhabitants to bring their eggs with him so that they may be safe in the monkey's bunker since the outside world wouldn't be safe for much longer. From days 94 through 96, I made preparations for my journey, which included readying the dino army for battle. Let's go, dinos. We got lots of work to do. Ellie brought some saddles she found in an abandoned monkey camp, suggesting I use them somehow. I should be able to use these. Thanks, Ellie. I threw the saddles on some of the dinos and crafted some cladophilevis on a stick, knowing how much they loved that stuff. Maybe now I can ride on one of these guys. Turns out I was too heavy for them, and I could just walk faster anyways. Yeah. Uh, uh, this isn't gonna work so well. However, I ended up giving the Clabophibus on a stick to the Dakota Raptors. Now we have tough and armored mounts to ride into battle. Just as we were getting ready, a meteor struck near the base, startling everyone. Everyone calm down, let's move out now. Come on, into the forest. On days 97 through 98, I led my dino army into the desert. Everyone keep an eye out for the monkeys. Along the way, I met up with the Didelphodon family from way earlier. Hey, nice seeing you guys here. No problem. You guys taught me a lot. Follow me to the monkey bunker. There was no time to waste, so we kept moving. I reached the monkey base on day 99. It was swarming with monkeys. They must be preparing for the apocalypse. Meteor strikes were starting to happen more often and one landed right on the monkey base. We better move fast, guys. I'm gonna search the base for King George. After all this time, Ellie and I had to go our separate ways. It was sad, but it had to be done for her protection. Well, Ellie, this is goodbye. <laughs> I promise I'll come back soon. Goodbye. I made my way through the base and found the elite squad of Galatas from earlier. They mocked me, saying they killed a T-Rex just like me and laughed at it while it was dying. That was my mom. I'll kill every single one of you. I pounced and tore their heads off with ease. I had to avenge my mom. That was for you, mom. And to pay respects to my mom, I need everyone watching to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you never miss a video. Also, comment down below what kind of video you want to see me do next. I then climbed up to the top of the monkey base, and right before me was King George himself. I finally found you. It was day 100, and meteors began falling all around me. Things were going bad. King George, how could you live with yourself? You had the power to use your big monkey brain to save all the species in the land. Instead, you chose to only save monkeys. I have no choice but to kill you. Wah, wah, wah. I'm Bronzo. I save all the shut up. You're pathetic. What kind of predator saves species? You deserve to die. After all, it's only natural selection working at its best. The only thing I'll be selecting is your head on a stick. Before we fought, a meteor struck the base and we fell into the river. And because of the meteors, the water started to drain. Let's do this. As we fought, meteors struck more and more frequently. It really was the end. 
Is this what you wanted? You're a fool. I fought tooth and nail with my Tyrannosaurus sword and utilized my speed boost. King George did tons of damage to me, but eventually I was able to best him and stay dead. Yeah, Bronzo! Huh? Is that a meteor coming straight to my head? Eh, makes sense. Ah!